Hey, hey, I, 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 I just realized I'm that's like, that's interesting music I use for intros. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I didn't know, John. I only found out the other week. Uh, what was it? A week ago? Oh, John. Oh, really? Yeah. It's yeah, I, 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 yeah, I just Googled Viking music and now it came up. So I was like, hey, that sounds cool. I'll just use yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, I can't see your, your uh, YouTube uh, profile image. Yeah, I'm not signed into my stream yard account. I tried signing in, but then they kicked me out of the studio when I tried doing that. So. Oh. What's wrong with Jeff? Is my uh, camera working, Bob? Well? It's oh, not. Right. No, the camera's oh. not working. Shoot. So, uh, I don't know. Aaron Deering, I'm, he's not playing on my mind. He's gone off YouTube. Brian Denlinger's back on. Yeah. Asking for money. He wants $50,000 now. <laughs> Wait, oh. really? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, he's got an, he's got another GoFundMe set up. Uh, what happened to his other? Whatever happened to his other one? I I mean I haven't been following Brian for a while. Whatever oh, happened? What happened to his other one? Oh, he got his forty thousand from that. And oh. That was about two years ago. Oh, was that for like it, was that for his like third property or something? I forget what it was. I have a, I have a terrible memory. <laughs> you can't keep up with him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's greedy for cash. Why did you need $50,000 if, he, if he's living off-grid? I mean, the only thing... I mean, I'm thinking... Obviously, I've never done it. Living off-grid, the only thing you need maybe is a bag of salt, some dry goods, somewhere to go and get water, uh, yeah. and maybe, maybe vegetables and things like that. But I think your expenses would go right down, wouldn't they? I mean, I, I personally would love to live. I actually, me personally, I actually want to live off grid. Quite frankly, I actually don't like living in the kind of area that I live in. Uh, I, I would love to live off grid. I just can't afford it. That's that's the thing. Yeah, but you could get cheap land the further you go north, couldn't you, John? Yeah, maybe I should set up a GoFundMe as well and see if people donate to that. Why not? I'll donate yeah. to it. Yeah. The problem is too is I don't have a car too, so that would that be a problem too. I don't I don't have a car. Well, you don't put that in the GoFundMe too. What was that? You don't have. I thought you did. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll start a GoFundMe. Hey, I'll get a GoFundMe. Hey, buy me a new car too. Yeah. <laughs> because my, my mom took my took the car, so now I have no car now. So when I go to the grocery store, I have to walk there. You know. Yeah. Why is she taking the car? Well, because she is um she is uh going to the to basically do some maintenance at the uh at her family cottage. So so she took. And we only have one car. So. Oh right, right, right. Well, save up, John. Buy a used Honda or something. Yeah. I'll probably do that. I mean, maybe I'll set up a GoFund GoFundMe for that as well. Yeah, you could do with a, an old army jeep, an old British army jeep that you could That's do. Cool. Maybe I should maybe I should, maybe I should buy one of those tanks that didn't he have a tank at one point, or, or is it or was it like a truck or whatever? Yeah, he had a big truck. He had a big ambulance, and then yeah. he had a big. I think it was a ten ton of truck. But I mentioned. Did, did he sell it? Or the, I heard he. I heard he sold it or something. I, I forget. I, yeah, I can't remember anything. I think he sold it at one point. I, I don't know. Yeah, I pointed out. I, I don't know if you know that Brian Denlinger has got a brother called Tom Denlinger. Yeah. I mentioned it to Jeff. What a contrast. Okay, he used to be some sort of rock star in a band yeah. called uh, Sardonics. But all the money, his own money, is used to to buy some land and build buildings for. Young people to come out and have a, I don't know what you call it, like a outdoor experience in the country, Bible studies, you know, campfires and activities. It's got loads of people turning up there, you know, during summer, obviously. Yeah. What a contrast between Brian Denlinger and his brother Tom. I, I just think it's weird, too, how, I mean, I, and this has always been kind of what's confused me, how, like, Brian needs all these different properties. Meanwhile, he doesn't even allow visitors. You know, well, he's just sold a house, John. Yeah, what do you need fifty thousand dollars for now? Yeah, and plus, too, it's like you know, when it comes to like if you're doing like full time videos, I mean, I do everything right here in my bedroom, like this is like right where I do my videos, all of my bedroom. You know, I don't yeah. need like a like, 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 have you seen his new ministry headquarters he bought about two years ago? It's bigger than both my colleges combined. I mean, it's huge, yeah, you know, it's a large house, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, it, like, like, literally, both my colleges combined only make like half the size of that thing. I mean, it's like, like, he's got, he's got that plus his other off-grade property that he has as well. Yeah. 
have a look at one of his videos. I'll I'll come to your channel and I'll post a link to to his. In fact, I'll see if I can get it up on screen now, because he got he's already got two thousand dollars. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. One thing one thing I just, I never understood as well is how I remember him saying like 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 a while back that he said that that if it comes to where like like the money's not coming in and God's not providing, he'll just get a secular job. Well, then there's been there's been cases where he's not getting enough money, but then instead of going to get a secular job, he just makes a video saying he wants more donations. I've seen him do that a couple times. Yeah, I remember him saying that too. Yeah. And at one point, there's like, there's like, what was that video called? I, I, I can never remember anything. Whatever, but it, like, he does like a 40 minute video, like essentially lecturing his followers about how they have to donate to him more. And he actually complains at one point about how he only got 41 donations in a month or something like that. But then, yeah. but then, but then earlier he says like, oh, if, if this doesn't work, I'll get a secular job. Well, then go get a secular job then, because if it's not working out. Well, he does have skills that he can use. Yeah, I mean, he's good at wood. He's pretty good at wood turning. He could, you know, make a living off that if he needed to. Oh, he's got three and a half grand already. Oh. 3,500. I, I want to, I, this, and I just need to put this out as well. You know, how he loves to compare himself to the Apostle Paul. Well, you know, the Apostle Paul actually, <laughs> yeah. the Apostle Paul actually like went places. Like, like you know, like he, he likes to make the comparison of Paul writing letters to making videos. But the big difference is that Paul actually physically visited the churches he was writing to. He wasn't just sitting, like he wasn't isolating himself and just not allowing any kind of visitors. He actually, like like when the Corinthian church was having their problems, he actually went to them and, and went to go sort it out. He wasn't just hiding out in a little cave somewhere writing letters to them, you know. But Brian is not making distribution unto the saints. Yeah. He's not, he's not um, I mean, like, I don't care what anybody thinks particularly of Matthew Landau, but I know Matthew was struggling with money and stuff. Most people are. But these people that are donating, because money is tight these days, that is money that they've earned through hard work. Yeah. Shifts, doing well, dirty I mean, heck, I mean, I'm struggling with money too. I mean, ever since I quit my night shift job, because honestly, I... I that job was just really bad for me, actually. But ever since I quit that, basically my my online Rumble videos have been my only source of income so far. So, like, if anything, I deserve I deserve a, a GoFundMe, if anything. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, John. You put your PayPal thing in in the private chat, and I'll donate to you if you're skinned. Yeah. Sure, I I, I could do that. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, it, you know, it, it it brings in, but like, but because the night shift job, because I, because the night shift job is really having a bad impact on my mental health, which has actually been proven apparently. But um, yeah, so basically, yeah. yeah. So so like ever since then, because I do actually monetize my Rumble videos because they do a lot of political stuff on there. So like so yeah. far, those have been my only source of income. So, well, I don't believe in muzzling the ox that treads out the corn, John. I mean, you put the hours in and stuff. There's no harm in asking, really. Yeah, you do do a lot of work, John. So that's a good point. But, yeah, and, and you know, it's like. I, I mean, I, I don't want to try to boast or anything, but you know, I, I do try to put effort into my videos. Like I do, I do try to put effort into them. You know, there is, I mean, I mean, obviously they're they're kind of easy to make. I will say that, but like, you know, like you are right. You know, I, I guess I can do have to kind of speak like a fool, I guess, because you know, I, I I do try to put some effort into them. Yeah, but you got to bear in mind, John, the attention span of people. I mean, fifteen yeah. minute video uh, is about right, really. Yeah, that's that's the thing too, and and plus too. You know, it's like mo most people these days, because we I mean, we are kind of in the end times where people just don't have any kind of like, like what, what what's the wording like, brain capacity for any kind of like longer stuff. So like like they want like a ten minute, fifteen minute video, and then that's like anything more than that, they'll say oh it's too long or whatever. So yeah. like that's that's it's the thing. It's enough time to finish a cup of tea and doing night shift, John. I did that two years yeah. at this recycling plant. I mean that was a bad enough job anyway during the day. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I could get used to night shifts. Well, that that's the thing too is that is that I actually did research after quitting, and I actually realized that like like the kind of stuff I like the health problems I was experiencing are actually like not uncommon for people who for people who do night shift. Like like I was actually one of the things I was I was doing was I was developing a mood disorder, so I was becoming more moody a lot, and that was actually because because of doing night shift. So I, I realized that you know, hey, so I, I was making some pretty decent money, but is basically destroying my mental health really worth the money you know what i mean so i just decided no it's not i just quit right plus two i mean me personally i i always just i just kind of find that being up all night is just depressing like being in the dark all the time i, I just find it depressing yeah. yeah the thing is as well when you get home you get home maybe at six or seven o'clock in the morning 
How yeah. are you going to get to sleep? Because everybody's going to work at that time. Yeah, well, that was the thing too. I like for the first like few months, I was like, like at 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 best getting six hours of sleep at best. But like mostly, I was only getting five or less. So the lack oh, yeah. of sleep was was not good either. Yeah. Yeah, I had to do an hour's drive when I finished my shift at Leyland and get to Morecambe. Yeah, and that was costing money as well. Yeah, I mean it, it's. You know, I think it's just because our bodies are just not meant to be up like that. I mean, the reason why, like, there was one time where I got like a nine hour sleep and I was still like exhausted when I went to work that night because we're just, our bodies are just not meant to be up all, all night like that. No, we're not designed that way. Man. Yeah. I mean, hence why, hence why, like, well, because when, I remember when I went, was on the uh, orientation day, when I did the orientation day uh, for my new job, there was like 25 people there. I was the only one for night shift. Everyone else was, was had some kind of day position. Right. So yeah, but yeah, so I quit. I, I actually quit like like the 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 day before the new year. So like that that was like I, I was like I was, I'm like I'm quitting this job. But um, yeah, so pretty much my brand Rumble videos have been, been my only source of income. So like if anything, you know, um, like again, I'd I'd love to live off grid, but you know, can't without I can't harp can't harp without a car. So yeah, it costs money to do it. Yeah, it, it, it's not really off grid. If you look at it, because if you yeah. buy one, I don't know what it's like in Canada or USA, but you've got to pay tax this, that, and the other every yeah. year, and and they can, the government can come and take it off you any time they want if you don't pay up. Yeah, even if you're off grid, like you still have to, you know, you can't like you can't get out of paying taxes. That's just how it works. But yeah. the thing is too is that you know, is that uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but I I just lost my train of thought. That sucks. Yeah. But yeah, that, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I remember, I remember what I was gonna say. Yeah, but I, I just remember what I was gonna say. But basically, you know, it's like, like he, had, like here you have Brian, who basically has like how many different vehicles does he own? He's got all these different things. But then he loves acting like he, oh, like he, like I, I constantly hear him acting like he doesn't have much money. Well, it's like, like, like I'm not sure if you saw Aaron Deering's video where he basically rebuked Brian. He said, you know. That like like I I've never seen a poor man where a poor man who who owns like three different properties, all these different vehicles and everything else, but yeah, he yeah. acts like he's so poor. It's like, yeah, you know. Well, that massive bus that he's got, that big long yellow bus. Yeah, I think it works. He's got these other vehicles. He's got he's just sold some land and that property he lived at, at Bridgewater. Yeah. And plus, too, like like Brian seems to act like if you're in full time ministry, like you like you're you're not supposed to get like a secular job. I know plenty of people who who would be considered full time ministry and they still work like a part time job. I mean, there's nothing wrong with yeah, that. Yeah. So it, like you know, if you need some extra income, just hey, get a part time job. You but know? he couldn't I mean, call the ministry full time really these days because mainly they usually maybe they work Saturday and Sunday to get the sermon ready for Sunday, and then yeah. they'll do a, a, like a Wednesday night or whatever. Bible study group thing, fellowship, you know, but and kind of the problem too with like with like online only ministry is that like you can't really make much money online without being monetized. That's kind of the thing too. I mean, the only reason why I'm having income is because I had to monetize my Rumble videos. But like 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 it's hard to actually make money online if you're not going to monetize. But I mean, I'm not I'm not saying you should do it. I'm saying it's just hard to do it without it. This way, you know, that's yeah. the thing too. Well, yeah, the thing is, John. I mean, obviously, you're not expecting to make millions, but I mean, yeah. For making a fifteen-minute video, that can take an hour or so. Yeah, that's the thing too. It's like I I have to write the notes. I have to you know get all the images and stuff. I'm gonna superimpose. I have to yeah. get you know it's it takes time. I mean, like 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 some videos they may seem like pretty easy to make, but the thing that that the the process of actually getting the video ready, like like pre like you call it pre production, then you have post production, which is the editing and everything else. Like it, it can take up to an hour and so, and even two yeah. hours in some cases. Yeah, and that's half your morning gone, John. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, the usually what happens is that I typically will do videos around eight o'clock a.m. They're typically not posted till ten thirty a.m. So it takes me like roughly two hours to do, like, le like a ten minute video. Yeah. And, and at one point I was doing like two videos a day, but then I, I just stopped doing. It. I get to figure it's just too much to do for me, me personally, to do two videos a day. Because like, it's when I, when I was on Rumble, because I got a second strike at one point. So I figured like, like I'm not going to risk getting a third strike. So I just won't post on YouTube till the strikes are gone. So I was doing videos on Rumble the whole time, and I was doing like two videos a day. And I'm thinking like, you know, like that was wait, that, like like that took up like, that took up my whole morning pretty much doing two videos a day. Do do your videos automatically upload to Rumble? Do they? 
Uh, no, I, I wasn't able to get that feature. I had to, I had to manually do it. Uh, I managed it. it. They uploaded uh, the whole lot. Yeah. Oh. I, th I haven't been on there for a, a week or so, but I'm gonna go and have a look. Oh, yeah, and also, uh, this, this actually just popped in my mind. I, I should point out too. I actually found that Brian Brian is monetized on Rumble as well. I actually just like I noticed it. that. Yeah, so so here's and here's the thing too with YouTube, you know, they'll put ads on your videos without your permission. So, like, obviously, if there's videos on Brian's YouTube ads on Brian's YouTube videos, he can't control it. But with Rumble, you have to give them permission to put ads. So, if there's ads on Brian's videos, he's he's giving them permission to put it on there. So, I so, so I, I, I saw a couple of maybe he, he maybe he got rid of it, but, I, but at one point, I remember seeing ads on Brian's videos, which which you ha which you can't do unless you give Rumble permission. So, it's not like yeah. YouTube or those do do it regardless, like Rumble, you have to allow them to do it which which so so if there were ads at one point which i remember seeing it means he was monetized at one point on rumble while while preaching against monetizing your videos yeah so how have you been generally john i mean a lot i saw one of your videos the other day you looked as though you're sporting a beard just about yeah i am starting to grow a beard actually yeah <laughs> i i just turned uh i turned 20 about I, roughly two, two months ago i turned 20 and yeah. Like 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 I'm 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 starting to get I'm actually having to get used to shaving now. Like like before yeah. like before I never had to shave that often, but now I'm having to shave all the time now. So I'm, well, you like, got a cat like, there, John. What the trick is? What you do is you yeah. put milk on your beard. No, yeah. the cat will come and lick it off. All right. Oh, I, I'll try that sometime maybe. All right. I was Might scratch your face. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, actually, the cat, my cat is declawed, so he won't, he won't. There was, there was one time, so this is a funny story. There was one time where I actually was, I was laying down. The cat got angry. He hits me, but all it was is it felt like a bunch of fur hitting me because he had no claws. Uh. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. But yeah, we we had him declawed because um our other cat basically just destroyed all the furniture because she just she loved just clawing on everything. So we we're like we had to get him declawed because we don't want to we don't want to like spend another thousand dollars on new furniture. No. No. And and the good thing is too, he is an indoor cat. So so like because if he was if he we had him declawed, we won't we won't let him outside because obviously he'd have no way of defending himself. But because he's an indoor cat, he doesn't want to go outside. So we don't have to worry about no. him standing by the door and just meowing constantly because he because he wants out. Right. So Jeff, I haven't seen any of your videos because I am subscribed to you. I haven't seen you doing any videos lately, brother. Uh, I just haven't bothered in the last couple months. Yeah. YouTube's getting worse. You see the latest now, uh, Philip has left the, the group. Oh, he oh, got food. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think even John months ago was saying something like that, and, and one or two other people. Uh, yeah, but about like back in June, like Philip came out against Brian about the Christmas thing. I actually did a video yeah. about it as well. So like it was going on since June. I mean, it was, it was months back that him and Brian were kind of feuding over Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't get in an argument over somebody over Christmas, John. I understand your position on it. I mean, I'm aware of all the pagan sort of uh, stuff associated with it. Um, it comes from uh, Roman Catholicism, that's the thing. Essentially, uh, paganism, uh, druidism even. Um, but, I mean, if I went into a Christian brother's house and he's got children and he's got the tree up and all the lights, I, I wouldn't say anything myself. Because I personally see it as just a way of giving your children some extra memories, you know, extra wonderful memories from when you were a kid and all that sort of thing, you know. Yeah, I mean, I guess my main pet peeve with the Christmas thing is mostly just around the Christmas trees. Because I, I, I've, yeah. I've done research on the origins of, of those things, and, and oh, like when I, when I see Brian's group like defending Christmas trees, I'm thinking like, how do you defend that when first of all, like they're like I've openly seen Catholics defending this kind of stuff as well. So if we're going to be against the Catholics, we should be against Christmas trees. But also just the fact of how the, any basic research will show that these Christmas trees, the, the idea of bringing a tree into your house and decorating it, an evergreen tree, it does come from uh, not only Catholicism, but also, for example, Germanic paganism, too. They would yeah, they would, right. they'd bring that they'd bring that into basically. And, for example, the like, same thing with the whole reef, the reef they would bring in because they believe the forests had, you know, were enchanted, basically, and they bring in these things to basically try to guard them from from forest spirits. So it comes it. it the origins is pagan. That's the thing. That, that's that's my main peppy is the whole Christmas tree. That's like like my main thing is not just but with Christmas in general. It's mainly with Christmas trees. Yeah. Uh, I got this book, John. 
Oh, hold on a sec. Oh, sorry. Forgot about my alarm. There. I got that. I have read it because it is quite hard going. Uh, hold on. Well, I was going to say this as well. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Basically, it's kind of funny how. Um, oh, yeah. That book. I've seen that book. I have. Yeah, you bought it, John, didn't you? Yeah, you bought it some months ago. Yeah, The Two Babylons, an excellent book. It is, uh, yeah, it is hard going. I couldn't read it all in one go. But, yeah, worth getting. Definitely. Yeah, it's got it's got like uh, with it, it's got um pictures in it as well. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, so this well, I was I was just gonna say this as well. It was kind of funny. I have a clip on my personal channel of literally like a ten minute and 40, 43 second clip of accountable KGB accusing me of being a Jesuit <laughs> without me without oh, yeah. naming me. Yeah. That that was funny. How ridiculous is that? I mean, I know let, you're. Let, I, oh, go ahead. I know you're a smart lad, John. I know that. I mean, how, how long have I known you now? I mean, so, not known you, but I mean, how long have we been communicating? I mean, it must be... Well, the first time we communicated, years. I was only 16 years old. So that was at least four years yeah. ago. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, to me, it's beyond ridiculous. That, yeah. Because I know you're an intelligent lad. I know that. It's a fact. Yeah. No, and way, never, never mind the fact, too, that I've done 140 videos against Catholicism, but somehow I'm a Jesuit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you know what the excuse is going to be? Oh, he's just pretending, you know. Yeah. He's infiltrating. Oh, and, and the fun thing as well, the, fun, the funny thing as well, is is the way he words it. Like, like, here, like here's what I compare it to. So, you know, like, like, you know, like, you know, the Star Wars films, right? Like, like everyone's heard of those. Right? Like, if you haven't, you know, it's like. I don't know what I don't know what you do. I mean, even 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 if you like you've been a Christian your whole life, you've at least heard of it at some point. Well, like you know how in the prequel films you had basically the Sith and their apprentices. Well, the how how he made it like how he worded it was he made it seem like like Bob like you're the Sith and I'm like your apprentice or whatever. Like that was the way he oh, worded yeah, it. No. That's just what it reminds me of. Yeah. No. It was it was funny. I've never thought of myself as being like a teacher over you or anything like that john i mean i just yeah. want to talk to other christian brothers yeah but just the way he words it he may seem like, like like i'm like your student or your like 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 you're like you're my master and i'm like i'm like your student or whatever like, like it just that's just the way he words it. it's so funny yeah it's, it's, it's funny too because i'm in i'm in canada you're like a thousand miles away from me but somehow like what yeah like somehow i'm yeah. like i'm like your your student that's funny i thought we were further away isn't it a lot further than that? Yeah, I'd say at least like like way more than a thousand. I'd say at least like at least four thousand, at least you know. Well, there's at least uh, what three or four time zones, isn't there? Yeah. Well, I mean, I know that UK they're at least like a couple hours at, like I think ahead of me. I'm not sure. Like it's it's five oh three p.m. where I am right now. I'm not sure. Oh, you're five hours behind. Yeah. So like so yeah, you're at least five. Yeah, you're five hours ahead of me. So yeah, the time zone shows that you know. And, and and the thing is too is that like if I'm a Jesuit, you know, I mean I'm a 20 year old working class male who is, is in a rural suburb who used to work a night shift job, you know, but somehow I'm working for the Jesuits. Well, first of all, I haven't got any paychecks from them yet, so you know I'm yeah. getting ripped off. And let's be honest, John, what Jesuit would even be? I mean, it would be a waste of time for them to try and infiltrate the Denninger crew. They're already doing the sort of damage. <laughs> that you would expect the Jesuits to want to do to them. They're doing it to themselves. Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. They're they're what? destroying themselves. Like like yeah. like they're like they're, they're destroying themselves basically. You know. I mean, I, I went to one of Brian's live streams. I think it was about three or four days ago, or one of his first one on off gridology. Oh yeah. <laughs> and all the names in the side chat. Yeah. I think I recognised about two. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's yeah. funny too because you know how Brian had that little inner circle of people that had like personal contact with them, but like now the only person that's still in that little inner circle is JT, pretty much. I mean, everyone else has. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but like last time I checked, 
because like, like before it was like who was it there was jeremy there was who else was there uh tim and a couple other guys now from yeah. what i know jt's the only one that's still like in his little inner circle of people well i didn't even see jt in the side chat on there yeah or device you've been out on two you know, the thing about JT is that I, I just, I personally think that the reason why he sticks around Brian Dillinger is, is, you know, mainly for personal gain. I just think he knows that, you know, that Brian Dillinger has a lot more followers and that, you know, he, he could, you know, obviously gain from that. Plus two, you know, when he came out with that, that Godhead book or whatever, which I have on my bookshelf, uh, yeah. you know, he, I, I think he wanted Brian to promote it. So I, I just think he, he sticks around just for, for various reasons, although that being one of them is that he does he does he kind of a personal gain from that. That's just a I, that's just a theory I have. I'm, I'm not, I can't prove that. Just a theory. Yeah, Brian's done a book as well now, hasn't he? Yeah, I saw like a, a Godhead book as well. You know, the thing about the thing about these kind of books is that you know, I agree with what Aaron Deering said is that the Godhead is something that Jesus Christ is supposed to show you himself. You know, let, let, like they really we really have no right to write any kind of books on that because it's supposed to be Jesus Christ who shows us that doctrine himself. That that's I agree with Aaron Deering on that. Yeah. It's a pity though, Aaron did. I did, I mean, towards the last couple of months, I sort of liked him. I felt sorry for him. I said to you, I even said to you, John, I felt, I felt well, not felt sorry, a bit of compassion. Um, I, I felt sorry for him as well, actually. Did, I, I, like, when, when I heard, when I heard, when I heard what he went through with those, those other guys, you know, with Accountable yeah. KGV and Hartley and his other, and Hartley and his other guys, I felt kind of sorry yeah. for him because I, I had no idea that was what he was going through. Like, if I had known that beforehand, I, I might not have been so harsh in my videos against him. Yeah. Well, I tried to talk to him. Obviously, he's just going to ignore me. But but then he started accusing me of um, hacking into his laptop, which is completely false. I've no idea. I would never. I wouldn't. Wouldn't know how to even begin to do that. Yeah, him and I were corresponding over Proton Mail like, back in September, and, and he was telling me that he he believes that because he was saying to me that he was getting lots of spam emails. And, and and he was he was thinking that like, like he had said that he thinks that someone hacked his thing, email or whatever and like his, he was saying he was saying that every time he talked about I don't, I don't remember exactly again my memory is very terrible but he said something along the lines of every time he would mention the Denlinger crew he'd all of a sudden get a whole lot of spam emails like he said something along those lines you know from, oh. from what because him and I used were talk over or proton mail now, now like now I can't seem to really contact him I don't know what what he's doing or, or whatever yeah he just I don't know what he's doing. You were good friends with him, though, John, weren't you? Yeah, b before the whole the whole thing that we had, you know, the little uh, falling out. Him and I, him and I were, were pretty. We we were really, we, we were we were good friends. We we were, yeah, I, I'd say that we were pretty good friends. But then, you know, he uh, came out and called me lost. But then, you know, but then then a year later, he comes out and realizes, yeah, you know, the, the whole thing was. But yeah, him and I were pretty good friends at one point. We were, you know, I mean, after all, it was actually he actually was the one who kind of like led me on the path of salvation because I was actually a false convert for a while. And he actually uh, rebuked me and realized and made me realize I was lost and I got saved. And so, so he actually, he, so I do have some respect in the area because he did kind of help yeah. me realize I was yeah. lost and I was, I was false the whole time. So there was that, but uh, you know, I think, I think it's just sad what's, what's happened and that's the whole thing. Yeah. I, I've never hated him, John. I know I've been accused of it. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think I've ever believed he's saved since the first day he came in that studio along with you. I already knew you. Yeah. Well, so. Well, I, I mean, that... we, we had talked before. I mean, like, like the first time we talked, I was still part of Anderson's cult. I mean, that was how far back we go. I mean, I, I was still part of. Oh, Anderson's right. New... Yeah, I, I was still following Steve Anderson's new IFB group. Like, that was the first time we oh. talked. I was actually, I was 16 years old. I was in, I was in 11th grade, and I was still part of anderson's cult so that that's that that's how far but that was the first time we ever communicated so just the yeah. it was like roughly four years ago at least steven anderson is he still on youtube yeah i think he is but he, he his channels keep getting deleted so usually his followers will just upload it like usually what he'll do is i think he just streams the stuff on facebook and then his followers just, just upload it on their channels right yeah, but Steven Anderson, yeah, I was part of his group for a while. And then uh, it was actually March of 2019 was when I left his group. No, oh, uh, my cat wants in. It was March of 2019 when I left his group. And then, then of course, I was kind of – I was on my own for a while. Then I joined Denlinger's group about November of that same year. And then, of course, about a year later in September in 2020, I was, of course, kicked out. And then I kind of – ever since then, I've just been kind of doing my own thing, just been on my own, not part of any kind of group, just, you know, doing my own thing. Yeah. Probably the best way, John. 
Yeah. Well, the thing is, too, is that I don't identify with any group. I, you know, it just I identify with Jesus Christ, not with any kind of yeah. group or, or or cult or whatever thing else. You know, it's like yeah, I think it's a bad idea because if somebody will find out what sort of group you belong to or denomination or whatever, yeah, then they'll just use that to beat you over the head with. It's yeah, main, yeah. Thing, I don't have anything to do with denominations at all. Yeah, that's that's the thing. He's like, I I consider myself what we call non-denominational, sensitive. I don't belong to any group. It, I'm just I'm just a Bible believer. I don't I don't I'm not part of any group. I'm not part of any any sect or whatever. I'm just a Bible believer. Just I believe God's word, and that's it. You know. Yeah, I don't know if you saw any of the videos on my channel. Yeah, I saw a few of them. I, I uploaded a video. I, I screenshotted this discussion that that nutty Catholic had with uh, redefining living. Oh, yeah. He got absolutely spanked in it, John. <laughs> oh, believe oh, me, I I have some I have some uh, crazy screenshots of Catholics using profanity. So I mean, like I I've, I know what Catholics are like. I mean, it, I I, just, I love it when Catholics claim that like oh we're that, like when they try to claim that their church is some kind of beacon for morality. Meanwhile, they're like throwing out the f bombs and a bombs and s bombs in the comments yeah. of my videos. Yeah. I also love it too. So, so this is actually I saw this I saw this actually in a debate one time. I'll I'll, I'll try to post the link. I'll see if I can find the video of it. But like you know who Nick Fuentes is, right? You've heard of him. Yes, I have. So basically, there is this there is this debate he had with this Orthodox Jewish guy named uh, Halsey, which which him and I actually talk over Discord. So like him and I know each other. Uh, I guess we're kind of acquaintances. But anyway, he had a debate with Nick Fuentes, and at one point, like Nick Fuentes was I'll, I'll try to see I'll try to find it if it's still on YouTube. But at one point, Fuentes. Uh, he, he started trying to make it seem like, oh, Western civilization was built on the Catholic Church and that kind of stuff. And Halsey, he just he just responds by saying, oh, I love I love you. I love how you compare the Catholic Church with morality, considering the fact that your priests can't reproduce and they get caught touching little boys. And and then, and then Fuentes got all crazy and, and triggered. It was funny. That Catholic I was on about, he actually stated that the Inquisitions were actually humanitarian. Yeah, I saw that. That, that was that, 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 that was I was laughing. That was funny. I mean, oh yeah, sure. Torching people and burying them alive is definitely very humanitarian. Yeah, but I've actually seen well, Catholics defend. Like I've seen Catholics actually defend the Inquisition. Like there's a video I saw of this street preacher confronting a Catholic, and the Catholic actually tried to say that the Spanish Inquisition uh, it helped bring people to the faith. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, right. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, expel. Like what? Like what? Like what? The like basically, like I did some research. What the Spanish Inquisition basically was <coughs> was that it basically was was rooting out essentially Jews and Muslims who. Who supposedly they thought converted to Catholicism, but were actually just like secretly practicing Judaism and Islam in secret. And it basically yeah. was meant to root them out. Essentially, that, that was why it was started to basically basically persecute the Jews and Muslims who were who were not, not real converts to Catholicism. But then but then it expanded out further. But that was that was the whole point of it was to was to basically and then eventually they ended up expelling the Jews and the Muslims out of Spain. But um, oh yeah, sure that's very humanitarian. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, whatever. But I mean, the Catholic so-called Church has been murdering Christians. Even yeah. though they were may, may have been, had some slight heresies within the, yeah. the, the Albigenses, the Cathars, Waldenses, and all that. Yeah, well, the Cathars, what well, the Cathars, they were heretics. I mean, they they did. They, for example, one of the things the Cathars did was they th they thought that like like I, I I looked into it so because some of the people they persecuted were heretics. You know, they're, they're, that is true. I mean, the Cathars they basically believed that that the material world was created by Satan and that only heaven was created by God. Well, that's not biblical because Genesis one says that yeah. God created heaven yeah. and earth. So that is heresy. Yeah. But at the same time, too, you don't kill them; you convert them. You, you preach the no. gospel; you don't kill them. You know. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, regardless, regardless if there were some heretics or not, you know, like like you're supposed to get, you're supposed to want to see them saved, not burning them. So even even that, you know, regardless of if the fact that there were heretics or not, which there obviously were, some heretics did they persecute? Or same thing with like you know there were people who did follow false religions, like they were Muslims or or Hindus or whatever else who did follow false religions. But yeah, again, like you don't you don't burn them; you 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 preach the gospel to them even the muslims you know john helped out the dutch protestants uh Suleiman yeah. the great i can't remember if he was um Tia or, or uh sunny or something but he helped out the protestants in in uh well the dutch protestants well the interesting thing about that is that is that prior to the spanish inquisition the jews the muslims and and i think 
basically the non-Catholics were actually coexisting peacefully. They, they didn't agree with each other, but they were able to coexist without killing each other. And then the Spanish yeah. Inquisition came along and then basically essentially destroyed all that. So, I mean, there like, like I've actually like researched this. Apparently, there were many cases uh, where, where Jews, Muslims, and, and non-Catholic Christians were able to just coexist and, you know, they didn't. They obviously were not agreeing with each other, obviously because you know they have different religions. But they 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 could they could coexist without killing each other. And then when Rome got got their fingers in the situation, look at that. They began killing each other. Then at that point, yeah. Well, look at abortion in the USA. Yeah. Every every pie they get the fingers in, people end up getting killed, and they're still at it. Well, I mean, the whole the Iraq War was essentially a Catholic crusade against Muslims. When you get, when you get down to it, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I believe so. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then then you got what's what's the thing? The Goa, the Goa Inquisition over in India, which was basically oh yeah, oh yeah, they've they been all over. Where, yeah, they've been all over the place. I mean, the, the they the India they they were they were busy burning Hindus and Jews and Muslims at the stake over there too, uh, which 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 then in turn you know because Hindus they think that Catholics are Christians, so then so part of why Christians are persecuted in India is because they. Are basically they thought that Christians were the ones doing that when really it was Roman Catholics, but yeah, I hate that when I mean that that fro. Yeah, he says he's born again. He says he's a Christian. I've never heard anything so disgusting in my life. Yeah, called him out for it. He went oh, yeah. on. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I was gonna say this too. Actually, you know, over in India, you know, I think I, think I sent you some of the stuff over email. Uh, the, some of the Hindus in India, they can be pretty violent over there. I mean, like I sent you some yeah. stuff about how they were, how like they're attacking Muslims and attacking Sikhs and attacking pretty much anybody who's not a Hindu. So it's like, but it was kind of funny too because that wasn't really a thing before the Catholics got involved. So like you find that everywhere Catholics go, the the people there become like violent. I've noticed that too. You know. Oh, uh, he's not playing on my mind. I, I thought I'd state that, but I mean, have you come across? Ben from the UK. They usually call him that. I I I I think I've seen him a few times. I mean, he um him and I had a big like like about a few months ago him or several months ago him and I had a big blowout over email and he basically he basically called me a heretic because I I was denying his his view on the Godhead where he basically was he basically holds like a Jehovah's Witness type view on the Godhead. But all all I all I really know about him is that he basically holds. Like a weird view on the Godhead. I I haven't spoken to him or about him since, but <coughs> well, I I, I, have, I have some screenshots of comments he left where he's saying some pretty heretical stuff, though. Wasn't wasn't Ben the pigeon guy, Bob? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, I, I thought he was all right, but I guess not. Oh yeah, I I have some screenshots. If you want, well, I, I can told, send, I can send you. I have screenshots. He he says some pretty heretical. Like what he basically says about the Godhead is he basically he basically like believes essentially like, like this is what the screenshots show is he basically thinks that the Holy Ghost is some kind of like energy force and that basically oh that's like, nasty, like, like it's it's weird it's weird what he believes like, like I don't know how to explain it properly like it's really weird but he essentially some, believes some that Gnostic. Well, well, well essentially yeah it is Gnostic but essentially what it comes down to is that he basically uh denies any kind of distinction between the father and the son and he he takes verses like out of context and everything else but essentially he he denies that there is any kind of any distinction at all in the godhead and he he says that that the father is the soul and the spirit and the ghost is some kind of like, like some kind of energy force that's the best the best way i can word it because the way he describes it i don't even know how to word it properly that's just the best way i can describe it but it, it's it's pretty i mean it, you're right it is very gnostic what he believes i mean it's it's like it's, it's just really weird. I, I can't again. I can't even word it properly because I don't even know how to word it properly. It's so weird. But I, I have screenshots. If anyone wants, I can send them screenshots. He said some pretty heretical stuff it, over emails to me and in comments to other people. I seen that, Linda. I was actually very disgusted. I had to turn that video off. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw that video too with the with the thing. What was Dad doing that? It's like, yeah, it, it was pretty disgusting but at the same time too i i do want to say this as well you know le, like one thing i disagree with brian on is making it seem like 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 he'll be punished for what his dad did well there, there's the verses that i forget what they are let me just, just find them out oh, uh, which I, I understand i understand it's old testament but like just hear me out uh let me find the oh my sorry my cat let me, let me, let me the verses in deuteronomy where it says yeah, like, yeah deuteronomy and ezekiel where it talks about how the fathers are not punished for the son or the sons are not punished for the father's iniquity there's one verse in deuteronomy one in ezekiel and one i think in first kings where it, it talks about how the, the son is not punished for the father's iniquity so it's like that that was where i was kind of like feeling i actually felt bad for brian because he he forgot that you know even if his father did do that 
you know, he won't, he won't, it's like, it's not his fault. Cause first of all, he would have had no control over that. It was before he was born. But second of all, God does not want to punish the father for the, or the son for the father's crime. I do apologize. And Brian, when I was saying though, his father told him not to, you know, have fornication or the marriage. It sounded to me like his father was ashamed of his sin. And yet here's his son bashing him when he's already six feet under. Yeah. The whole and, thing. And then, the whole what do you think at one point? Oh, go ahead. I just said the whole thing was rotten. He shouldn't even open his trap. Well, who, who, what you mean? You mean come up with a video like that? Yeah. Yeah, me. Yeah, I, I happen to agree. Like when I was watching the video, me personally, I mean, I understand his reasoning that come, like exposing a sin, but I just think that stuff like that, like that serious, should should really just be kept private. Really, that like like I, like I would never like post something about that. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Especially because the fact is, his dad never really had like a, a prominent role in his ministry. Like for example, if his dad was like constantly in his videos or had a prominent role, then I can understand, you know. Like, like mentioning that but like his dad like he barely saw his dad like, like there was like one other video where his dad was in where it was like talking about like like paramedic stuff so it's like i just don't think it was necessary to come out when his dad ne they didn't really play a prominent role in his ministry that's the thing but, but I, I agree with you jeff i think it was pretty disgusting i i i think he really shouldn't have posted that well it's not even appropriate for the whole internet to know that like he can be disgusted in the, his own family but you don't share it to the whole internet in the world, especially yeah. when his father's dead too. By the way, as well, I, I think that's kind oh, yeah. of uh, yeah, that's uh, dodgy territory. That Speaking yeah, I mean of the dead. No, I mean the thing is, I I've done videos myself confessing the sins, but it's stuff that I've done myself where it's like where it affects like me on camera. Like, like I did one video where I, I like I, I've done numerous videos where I've come out and repented of stuff I've done wrong, but normally it's like stuff you can see me do on camera. Like I keep my private life private. You know what I mean? Like I just you know. That, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jeff, are you doing okay over there? Are, are, you, are you still working and stuff? Yeah. yeah, I'm working four days a week. Yeah. I lost my job at the hospital because of the, the vaccine thing. Oh, right. You weren't going to take that. No way. Yeah. I don't want... blessing, though, I'm glad to get away from that rotten, yeah. wicked place. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys heard. So our prime minister, Justin Trudeau, I mean, I mean, he's a joke, but believe me. So apparently one time, so it, about a month ago or so, he actually got COVID-19 despite being triple vaccinated. So he got vaccinated three different times. He still got yeah, COVID-19. Well, I'm trying to, I've already had a warning today with one of Brian Denlinger's video. I don't want to. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah cause now, because now they censor you for talking about vaccines now. Yeah, I forgot about that. Just say yeah. shot or juice or cooties. Yeah. yeah. The, the fluids. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've heard. Like, I, I obviously don't like using Vol Voltaire as like like a source, but he he made a good quote. He said that you know the people who rule over you are are the ones you can't criticize. So if you want to find out like who is really ruling over you, just find out who you can't criticize. Yeah. Yeah, I've read Voltaire. I read one of his books. I can't remember what it was called now. Yeah, the guy, the guy. I heard he was a Freemason. He had all kind, of, like he basically was a like a rabid, you know, atheist. But he, like, it was true what he said. I mean, a broken clock is right twice a day. Like, 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 like whoever you can't criticize, like you know, that's who that who, that's his likely ruling over you. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I read that Voltaire. I heard, I heard that he hated the, he hated the Jews and that kind of stuff, which. Oh. Obviously, I, I have an issue the with Nazis. They use that quote, and they say it's the Jews and all that nonsense. Yeah, I, I'm on Gab. Like, like if you go on Gab, it's all kinds of, of neo Nazis, and they often they often will use that quote from Voltaire uh, to to say like, I mean, and when, when I was part of the new IFB, I was I would use that quote. I mean, because when I was part of the new IFB, I was I was an anti Semite myself, so I would use quotes. I used to use that quote as well, so I know firsthand. But I mean, I mean, but, but, like back when I was part of the new IFB, I mean, I was I was probably like the most I was probably the most anti-Jew person in my entire province. That that's how rabid I was rabid I was when I was when I was in the new IFB about four years ago. I think it's important for us to always pray for them first to be saved and then pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Too. Also, it's kind of funny too. I mean, this is this is thing I, I, I think I mentioned in the past videos. But like a lot of these neo-Nazi alt-right figureheads, a lot of them are frauds. And, and the reason why I say that is because whenever they get doxxed, that like you find out they're not who they really are. And here's one example of this. And this is this is something I found out like years ago. 
But basically, they have this guy called Mike Enoch, and he ran he ran a show called The Daily Showa. And if you don't know, Showa is basically Hebrew for Holocaust. So the show was basically The Daily Holocaust. And he basically was like probably the most anti-Jew person in the entire white supremacist movement. Well, then when it gets docked, it turns out he's married to a Jew the whole time. You know, so 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 he basically he he's married to a Jewish woman who not only is a Jewish woman, but is like very liberal, attends transgender events and all this other stuff. But then meanwhile, when she's not looking, he's hiding in the closet recording Daily Showa. But then, but then when it comes out he's married to a Jew, she ends up divorcing him, and then and he he plays the victim card. So it's like it's like one by one these white supremacist people get doxxed and and like, and then you find out they're not who they say they are. You know, it, it, it's it's like it's like how, how do you how do you do that to where you have this show where you're just talking about Jews nonstop, but then you then you're married to a Jewish woman the whole time. It's like what. <laughs> Sounds like he's frustrated to him. Yeah. Oh, and then and then when and then when he gets called out for it, because that because that same Halsey guy that debated what's his name, uh, Nick Fuentes, he called he called Mike Enoch about it, and Mike Enoch's like, well, yeah, that's a personal attack. Well, it's like if you're gonna take a moral stance, then it's like, but then but then like your more but then, then your personal life is completely opposite of that. Then it's like like why should we believe anything he says? Like if, he, if he's gonna go off about how the Jews control everything and everyone's connected to the Jews and the Jews run this, the Jews run that. Meanwhile, he's married to a Jewish woman the whole time. Why should we take him seriously? You know what I mean? That was House's point. That's the thing, though. The unsaved people—they don't care if they're hypocrites or listen to hypocrites. Yeah, yeah. Mike Enoch—he claims Mike Enoch claims to be a Christian as well, but um, I don't know. But he, he definitely is. Well, I mean, I don't know. All, all I know is that some of these alt-right guys do claim to be Christians because, uh, you know, but it's, it's kind of funny for a Christian. He's pretty bad at it. <laughs> oh, and then, and then, of course, you got what's his name? Richard Spencer, who, you know, honestly, like Richard Spencer, he's probably the gayest person I've ever seen, like on like ever. I mean, the thing about Richard Spencer is that like like I've, I've looked like seen videos of him like he would fit in the San Francisco so well. It's crazy. I mean, the guy the guy is probably like he's like he's super homosexual. I mean, like like he would fit so well in the San Francisco and he's supposed to you know, leader. He's like the leader of the alt right. <laughs> I've got Fro, the Roman Catholic here in the studio. Oh, yeah. Do you want to discuss? Do you want to talk to him or? Can't hear you, John. Oh yeah, I, I muted myself. Is is he that Catholic that 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 posted? I think he's yeah, he's that Catholic that posted those profanity comments in my videos. Yeah, I, I remember yeah. him. He thinks the Inquisitions were humanitarian. <laughs> oh, he's the guy that thinks that. Oh wow, that's funny. Do you want to talk to him? No. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if he wants to, if he's willing to come on, we could, you know. Well, he's uh, in the studio. He obviously is. Hello, hello, hello. How are you, Fro? Doing well. Doing well, very well today, actually. Just got out yeah. of the shower. Yeah. Uh, we did mention you earlier. Uh, I'm sure you're probably aware of that. Oh. Yeah, no, I know. I, I caught the idea where you guys were talking about the Inquisitions. And so uh, I actually, I, I actually uh, came in here just uh, kind of uh, posing something in the private chat for everybody to see. It's actually a uh, very good book, actually, that is um, essentially it's by Dr. Henry Kamen. And it's a uh, essentially a historical review of the Spanish Inquisitions. And uh, this is what I mean when I'm saying that the Inquisitions were, in fact, humanitarian, because uh, he essentially destroys the whole idea of what's called the black myth of the Inquisition. It's been the yeah. Protestant, it's been the like kind of the propagandistic narrative of this um, event that's been uh, circulating since the 17th century, essentially. Can I just ask you who he is? Uh, I'm going to, I'm, do, I'm not trying to imply uh, confirmation bias, but is this Henry Kamen, a, a Roman Catholic? Not that I am aware of, no. I think he is definitely a Christian or of an at least nominal sense, but he is most definitely Western liberal. He actually, um, he did his PhD dissertation on the Spanish Inquisition, and he actually, and he went into the study attempting to kind of uh, publish a work to kind of uh, thoroughly repudiate the Inquisition, and in the course of his study, he ended up coming with a much more nuanced view. While he is still against the Inquisition and its practices, he also came to an understanding that the Inquisition um, did actually um, introduce a standard of law and ethics that was unique to Europe in that time period. Uh, uh, 
Well, I'll tell you what yeah, I'll do. So, so, oh, no, first of all, love, let me let me just make that here. This man, into this man, uh, philosophically and theologically, would disagree with my proposition that the Inquisitions were uh, ethical. He would not want to see them in t- today's day, day and age. And yet, yeah. he also ha- doesn't agree with you either. He's taken a very um, nuanced view in this position. He isn't. He doesn't see the Inquisitions as particularly bloodthirsty, but not necessarily good either. Essentially, yeah. it's a good book. Oh. Well, in fairness, I, I put a link to that book, a short and early in the, in the uh, side chat. So, go on, Jeff. Oh, I just said it sounds like an apologist. Well, uh, well oh, 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 sorry, sorry, Bob, you first. Uh, for all, I don't think he apologizes for it. I hate that word, apologist. I've got to say, I don't like it. No offense, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, Fro will answer anything about Roman Catholicism. You could argue that he's an apologist. I don't know what Fro would say to that. Well, again, like the word apologist comes from the Greek word apologia, literally means to make a legal case. Some and, word. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, we're, we're all going to be apologists for something. So yes, I guess you could say I'm technically a Catholic apologist, just as yeah. Bob would be an apologist for his own views. Uh, what I want to do, actually, with the Pale Galilean is just teach Catholicism as it has understood itself, as accurately as I can. So if that makes me an apologist, I guess I'll take the title. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I've studied Greek. I know what apologist uh, is, but, uh, yeah, giving a defense of what you believe in, there's no harm in that. I mean, me and Fro have had conversations before, not privately, it wasn't secret. We got on okay, didn't we, Fro, I think? Yeah, we did. Yeah. So did you have... Uh, I need to butt in for a second, too. Like, I don't know if that's the proper word. I'm still learning all these new words, apologist and all these other things. I'm just kind of a simple guy. So. I got you. What's no. going on with... Oh, I shouldn't be asking, really. What's going on with what? Ryan. Uh, yeah, he and Smokey had a bit of a falling out because apparently, yeah. uh, so, so supposedly, and I have no idea if this is true, but supposedly Smokey Saint actually is Josh Herbel, uh, Herbel, whatever, however you say the last name, despite uh, denying he was. I don't know uh, what's going on. I'm not getting into. I'm not getting involved in that. I'm just. No, no, uh, I'm trying not to. I mean, I just yeah. because of the confusion that's being caused, bro. That just gets me sort of interested in trying to work out what's going on with it. What, you know what I mean? I will tell uh, you. I will tell you. I'll tell you this. Supposedly, it does. It does involve the um the FBI investigating someone. I guess uh, supposedly inv- involves the FBI investigating news unit or whatnot. And so um, I just stay away from that for a while. Just enjoy the fire. Just just yeah. enjoy the fire storm over a cold beer for a while, until it kind of uh, obliterates itself. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just curious who who is the Smoky Saint? I've heard of the Smoky Saint. Who is he? I I, I don't know anything about him. Who is he? Yeah, anyway? he, I, he he runs a podcast called Smoky Saint Channel. Has a kind of an open forum like this, only it's kind of standard on his channel. I've been on there. I've been on there quite a few times. Regular contributor, kind of expressing my own views. Um, yeah. Typically, as far, as far as the drama goes, I've uh, stayed away from it. And um, yeah, all it looks like it is it is a proper firestorm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was curious because I, I saw I saw one of his streams and like it, it's that was it. I mean, I saw one of it like a couple months back, but that's the only thing I ever watched him. I just, I just, I don't know. I don't, I just don't, I just don't know a lot about him. That's all. I don't know anything about him. Yeah. Is he affiliated with any like groups or denominations or what is he? No, <laughs> no. I would. I couldn't tell you. He keeps he keeps his private life. Uh, Extremely close wraps. I could not tell you that information. He does As, like he, what he, what he has admitted is that he goes to a weekly Bible study group, and that's what he considers church. Apparently, yeah. He, I, I, I just I personally think yeah, the name of Smoky Saint. I I just find it kind of an interesting name. That's all. I think it's kind of creative, Smoky Saint. He, uh, yeah, it's a reference to I think James two, where it says your oh. life is but a vapor, and oh, also. I see. He, and also, like, um, an, an, another reason I think he named himself that, and I could be wrong, but when you listen to him, he kind of sounds like the way chain smokers sound. And I don't know oh. that much about his private life, but I got a feeling like he um, really enjoys the smokes. I got, I got well, the I think feeling. It's, the thing is, I saw, like, one stream of him, and, like, I had to turn it off after a while because it was just, like, F-bombs being thrown all over the place. But, like, that, that's, I, that was, like, the only thing I saw of him. But, like, 
all, all I know about him is that he just has that live show. But yeah, the one the one time I saw him, he, like, like the one time I ever watched him, he just had it was just f bombs and s bombs being thrown all over the place. I just had to turn it off because I found it vexing. But but it, it's interesting the the thing that's going on. But oh well. Yeah, I I know he um like uh Smokey does swear every now and then that I'm aware, of, but usually he just he usually uses the words like uh pond scum roach trash oh. rat, and stuff like that uh it's kind of other people that he has online that uh such as like other atheists that he invites oh. that have uh more of the uh bad tongue you could say well i mean if they're atheists of course i mean I, i'm an ex-atheist and you know yeah. I, I i used to use a lot so if they're atheists cussing i i, I i'd expect that from atheists because yeah you know. it's, yeah it's, so the thing about this i i kind of uh I I I kind of have a bad language myself, but like um, and again, this is this is no excuse, but like um, I my I come from a military family, and so my 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 father, while I was growing up, didn't really uh keep it in check. I basically basically inherited it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'll admit too, you know, you know, I mean, like for example, when I when I used to do my night shift job, it was very physically demanding, and like you know, let's just say like I was lifting a heavy box, and maybe like my back cracks, I might just let out a profanity board because it just hurts so much. But, you know, I mean, I'm sure, you know, it just slips out. I mean, again, I'm not defending it either, but, you know, because, because my job I, I used to have was very physically demanding. If I hurt myself, I might just accidentally let, let one slip out, which, you know, again, not, not, you know, not defending that, but it just happens, you know? Yeah, de yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm working the night shift now, actually. I actually have a pretty good schedule. I actually have a very pretty good schedule here. I'm not going to, not going to lie. <laughs> uh, I, I quit my night shift job because I just, I, I, I just found being up all night was just depressing. So I, I, I just quit it. Yeah, for uh, for me, it wasn't actually depressing because like uh, I I um I I kind of stu structure my time in so much that I can enjoy like uh, the uh, daytime hours, but moreover than that, uh, my last job where, where where I was at, I was actually working twelve hour shifts, like uh, three days one day, for, well three days one week, four days the next week, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I bas I basically turned into uh, I I turned into uh, just like a wallflower collecting a check. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> wow i mean that, like 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 with my net shift job i i did it at a, a walmart location and i mean i knew it was i knew it was gonna be physically demanding but i had no idea how bad it was going to be to the point where like like i was like there are times where i had to miss work because of, like my back which is was in so much pain and it's like i i had to i spent so much money on painkillers i mean and, and i just figured you know and and pretty much all the, and we got this new manager and she was a she was a jerk i mean she just had no sympathy for anything at all I mean, she like she would make all kinds of ridiculous demands out of us that like that like she herself could never do at, at all. Like she would she would say, "Hey, even if the truck comes late, you have to have it all done before it, before it, the, the store opens." We're thinking like, "Well, that's not that's never been humanly possible." So, but then she she basically expects us to be superhuman. So, at a Walmart, <laughs> yeah. And it was funny because even 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 our even our assistant managers hated her too, and, and even our assistant managers were complaining about her to the store manager. But of course, you know he. He, he like he he he, he said he couldn't really do much about it because she technically hadn't broken any rules, so she couldn't, he couldn't really do much about it other than just try to talk to her and say, "Hey, could you go a bit easier on them?" Uh, but yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, put a link to your channel in the side chat if you want. Hopefully, nobody will accuse me of being a Catholic, but you you can put. You know, Bob, I made that joke one time. Come on. <laughs> 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 well, you got this, you got accountable KJB. He already think he already thinks I'm a Jesuit anyway. I mean, he's like, he, I, like, yeah. like, like, obviously, obviously, I'm critical of Catholicism, but like, he he did like a ten minute sec section of a video, just dedicated to, to talking about me as a Jesuit. So it's like, I mean, I, some guys already already think I'm a Jesuit anyway, so it won't it won't do me any harm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like I had a conversation with uh, Ben. I don't know his last name, but like Bob knows who oh, I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah, so he actually accused me of being a Jesuit plant. Or or how did it say kind of like a like, I don't know how he said either Jesuit shill Jesuit plan something to do with the Jesuits and then I oh I think he called me like a Jesuit coadjudicator or whatever whatever that name is. I think that's what he called me and I was just like I just said this publicly on my own stream like man I wish I was a Jesuit coadjudicator I wish that I at that point at that point I could just be doing what I'm doing now for free and they'd be paying me to go to uh, get my bachelor's and then my master's yeah. that would have been oh, awesome <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, obviously, I've done like lots of videos about the Jesuits, and you know, obviously, I, I, I mean, obviously, all, I, I think they're very satanic, and I, I make no bones about that. But like, but like, I just think calling me a Jesuit, it's like I'm a 20 year old working class kid from Canada who's struggling to make ends meet, but somehow I'm working for the Pope. I mean, yeah, well, sure. Hold on, you're, you're 20. Yeah, I turned 20 about two months ago. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I would. I actually would have. Uh, I would have uh, thought you'd been older. You carry yourself as someone that's older. Okay. Oh, oh he does. Yeah. I was yeah, like, I... John when he was sixteen or seventeen or something, weren't I, John? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much, def- I lived. I mean, I live alone. I pretty much de facto live alone anyway. So it's like, you know. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm I'm only 20, but like I'm already, I'm basically because my mom she goes out constantly, and then so and she and so I'm basically I'm pretty much. Def, I mean, for the past two months, I've been basically alone. So I'm de facto living alone anyway, pretty much. I got to say, I don't hate Roman Catholics, John. I just don't like Roman Catholicism. Same here. I I don't hate Catholic people. I mean, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I don't hate. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm very critical of the religion of Catholicism, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, it's just like with Muslims. You know, I, I've done videos against Islam, but I don't hate Muslims as people. You know, right? And so, and again, but um, all all three of you, and I imagine Jeff has the same opinion. All three of you are open to have that opinion. That's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay if you want to be criticism of Catholicism or even hate it. I, ideas don't have feelings. Um, however, just represent it accurately. And that's what I want to do with the Pale Galilee. Because oftentimes what I've found, not just the critics of Catholicism, but Catholics themselves oftentimes aren't able to um, aren't able to articulate Catholicism in an accurate way. I, that's yeah. why I've noticed. Like it's a problem both on the those that are Catholics and those that are against Catholicism, neither group can actually knows what the religion teaches. And so that's what I want to do with, different with the Pale Galilee. And while, while Jeff is right in so much that I am technically an apologist, what I want to do with my channel is actually just accurately demonstrate what Catholicism teaches about itself. And that's why just last week I started a catechism class. I uh, read the first um, part out of, uh, out of St. John Paul's catechism. And uh, n- next week here, I'm going to... Uh, Kind of re- to a, do a reading out of the Catechism of the Council of Trent. So do do um do the first section out of Trent and then compare where they uh where the, where they agree on the kind of issues they bring up. What what the uh, catechisms feel as is most preeminent to bring up something like that. Didn't you you did a video? I think it was a couple of weeks ago. For all um, not exposing that's the wrong word. I think I can't think of the right one. Uh, the way that this Catholic. Uh, conducted himself in what was it discord or yeah no it, it it was it was streamyard and it was basically uh how uh, uh how the it, and it, it was a it was like on uh on a youtube called jp live or something like that and yeah, uh Sm- smoky made me aware of it actually because he had an interaction with a catholic that he said was uh absolutely ridiculous and laughable and well he was right and that's what I mean. That's why the Pale Galleon exists, because the Catholic that was on JP's stream talking to uh, talking to Smokey, and there were two of them, um, neither one of them um, was able to represent Catholicism accurately, and they're both Catholics. And like, oh, they, oh, oh they, I, I was just, just going to say this, too. Wait, hold, wait, hold on. So sorry about that. Go ahead. They made some basic, like, elementary errors that essentially, you, that essentially just like, how put it? If you've been a Catholic for like six months, even three months, these are some of the first things you're taught, and they were categorically wrong in many respects to them. And so, like the Pale Galilean exists for those people too, as much as uh, gentlemen like uh, like you three as well. Uh, now, I think uh, I think uh, John wants to say something. Yeah, well, we say, just say too. Coming out with rubbish, don't we? Yeah, I was just gonna say too. I I actually was recently. Uh, I just like what occasionally what I'll do is I'll just I'll Google my I'll just Google my name on YouTube. Just go, I'll Google John Craig and just see what comes up. See, he was talking smack about me. And I recently came across this channel. Uh, it's it's called Stop Hate and Bigotry. And they, they literally posted clips of clips of, of me uh, of, of videos I posted about Islam like a year ago. And and one of these clips, they they literally are saying that I'm, I'm av- that they post this one clip. Where they said, "Oh, John Craig and advocates for violence against Muslims," and the clip is me simply saying, "Where Islam goes, terrorism follows," and that's somehow me advocating for violence against Muslims. So, you know, that that was that was just funny. <laughs> yeah, uh, Muslims are a very militant people, no doubt. Um, yeah, yeah, and and so uh, what's going? So, yeah, so so uh, what's going on with the uh, what was going on with those two gentlemen? Is uh, they were saying something like, uh, "How would I? Uh, how, how would I say this? Um, how would I say this?" Basically, they refused to. Basically, one was kind of had a uh, very elementary understanding, but was uh, wholly ignorant on uh, ta- on actually talking about more of the nuances and what in the discussion he was part of. The other one was um, how would I say it? The other one you could tell was more educated in Catholicism, and yet, um, and, and and yet at the same time, 
had an arrogance that prevented him from th- making a thorough understanding. I want to quickly post. I'm going to run and get a glass of water, but I just want to post something in the uh, in the comments. So there's actually this website. Uh, so I, I I just found out this, this this channel that posted clips about me. They actually have a blog called Stop Hate and Bigotry, and they have like three articles on me. It's actually pretty funny. I'm just gonna post one in the, in the description. Their most recent one is called so again, this, it's called John Craig and launches Islamophobic Media Barrage. I mean, like like I, I just want to just just post this in the description because it's really funny. I, I didn't even I didn't even know so very recently, but this is just. It's funny, but they're, but they're claiming that in the article they they claim that I'm an Islamophobic Slavic nationalist and self-proclaimed Christian fanatic that has recently uploaded a barrage of Islamophobic videos on his Rumble channel. So, yeah. Wait, that, wait, that. hold on. Are you Slavic, John? Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm from Russia. Oh wow! Because actually, uh, one one of my uh, uh, one of my ex-girlfriends actually is from Poland. All right. Yeah. Oh, uh, w- uh, one 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 other thing, John. Uh, if if you if you don't mind, actually, uh. And I, I guess like um how to how to say this uh towards the weekend I was going to put out another video kind of uh, responding to a few you recently did of Catholicism so I wanted to kind of uh I wanted to kind of uh, just level that with you already I'm not oh sure to... sure you you can go ahead I mean honestly I mean I, I'm I'm open to criticism I mean you can go ahead yeah I just want to let you know I'm not going to smear you or say anything like that oh, no, no, don't, to... oh don't worry believe me I I mean you can smear me all you want I honestly don't care because I. I mean, I'm just used to it. So I mean, like you can, I, but like you can, I honestly, I like you, you can say whatever you want. I mean, I honestly, I, I, I won't be offended. Like, like you, you can feel free to say anything. Yeah, can I play this, uh, John? Yeah, you, you, can go ahead, you can go ahead and say it. This is, it's laughable. It's only this, 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 so keep in mind, guys. This is this is me supposedly advocating for violence against Muslims. I mean, it's it's nuts. Stop hating bigotry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said before, wherever Islam goes, murder, religion, Islam is religion. Hey, Bob, you got to pause it real quick, please. Sorry? Okay, I think um, you're kind of, like, echoing on your end, I think. I think, like, uh, yeah, play uh, play the video and mute yourself. I think that ought to handle it. I said before, wherever Islam goes, murder and bloodshed fall. Islam is religion of terror. Whenever there's Islam, there's terrorism. There's murder. There's bloodshed. That simple. So that, that that's me supposedly advocating for violence against Muslims. I mean, what? Did you yeah, actually hear that? <laughs> I mean, the, the best thing I can accuse you of there is just thought crime. That's it. Yeah, and and, and then and then you got that blog post where I'm supposedly launching an Islamophobic media barrage. It's like what? Oh yeah. Did sure. you could you actually hear that then when I when I when, when I muted? Uh, yeah, uh, I I oh, can right. because I can because like your computer audio and your microphone audio are two different things. So oh, like. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, so so like, and in fact, I've noticed that with a lot of your videos, you play that, and it, and the then the video echoes like twice. And that's because uh, it's also and that's because uh, your micro your microphone's also picking it up. So you got two sources of audio, and so what you got to do, you just have to like uh, mute yourself because the video itself is being streamed over the web, right? So everyone thank can- you so for helping out the Bible believing Christians. Oh, not a problem, not a problem. We count the two to help each other. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, so uh, what's oh, up? So yeah, actually, I learned, I learned that myself actually because I was making a, I was making a, I was, how to put it? I was making a video response on due to the debate between a Muslim Daniel Hakechu and the evangelical Christian David Wood. I, I got to finish that debate actually. I might do that this week and uh, put uh, the response to John on the back burner for just a little bit. And so uh, what's going, what's what's was going on? I I noticed and uh, kind of a Slim Jim made me aware of this that it was uh, echoing. And I realized why, but I just, uh, I realized that if I just muted myself, uh, the video itself would play just perfectly fine. Oh, by the way, and unfortunately, the Muslim Daniel Hekachu won that debate. Uh, it's abundantly clear. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw some debates today that what did with this other guy. What's what's his name? Uh, uh, I, I, can't, I can't, I can't pronounce these names, but like he did, the, he did, he did like multiple debates with this other Muslim apologist, and like he failed miserably in all in all debates. Yeah, well, and, and, that's, and, that's a, and that's a thing, and that's and again, that's something that I'm trying to dedicate with the Pale Galilean to understand just how toxic that Western liberalism is to a Christian mindset, because when David Wood is debating these uh, Muslims, or, or even anyone, yes, he's an evangelical Christian, but his Christianity is informed more by Western liberalism than, say, the traditional Christian sources of uh, the history and the Bible. Right. Like, oh, like I, again, like, like when, when I, if I were to um, take on Daniel Hekachu, um 
I could, I could, I probably could fare much better than David would because I'm not affirming liberalism. I actually agree with Hikachu in that, that liberalism is actually very toxic. For Same here, actually. Under it. In fact, that's actually one of my criticisms of, of David Wood is how, is how his arguments against Islam are not really biblical because, you know, some of what Islam stands for is actually biblical, you know, like modesty on women, uh, no idolatry. Like, so like some of it is actually biblical. And, and you know, I, and this is always, this has actually been my criticism of just the counter jihad movement as a whole is that a lot of their arguments against Islam are stuff against Islam that Islam is actually correct on. And, and for example, right, you, I know. You know, that's, and that's why that's the thing too, is that, you know, is that, is that David would like a lot of his arguments, like he actually did one video where he said it was hate speech for Muslims to destroy Hindu idols. And he'll actually like almost side with the Hindus against the Muslims. And as a Christian, I would say, well, why would you side with Hindus? Cause they're just as lost as the Muslims. You know, I, I, I go from the stance of, you know, and plus the fact is they're persecuting Christians too. The Hindus are. So like, why would I side with them just cause they're against Islam? So I've always said, you know, for example, the enemy, in the, that, that's a situation where as a Christian, the enemy of my enemy is not my friend. You know, I, I don't care how anti-Islam the Hindu, Hindu nationals are. They're not, they're not my ally. You know, they're, they're just they're just as, as satanic as the Muslims are. Right. I mean, exactly. You, you well, got it completely right, John, because like and, and, yeah. and, here, here, and here's the issue. When I was debating and this just happened a while ago, and I think y'all were talking about it uh, when I was debating uh, uh, Smokey Saint on the ethics of the Inquisition. I all, all the only thing I use is that the is that smoke is smoky saint because he is uh, influenced by Western liberalism was presenting the Inquisition as if it was just something novel, as if it was just a uh, a, 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 a sudden um, era of violence in the medieval times. It's like, no, no, like not at all. Like the Inquisitions is nothing more than a logical out is nothing more than a logical outpouring of what was standard Christian practice at the time. Because like uh, like again, uh, Christian emperors um, would uh, you would used to use to per persecute Greek pagans in Rome and Constantinople to be a pagan or to practice pagan religion. Carry was a capital crime, and oftentimes just consistently throughout all Christian nations and those that uh, affirmed Christianity, there was always a level of persecution against subversive elements that would seek to overthrow like the Christian culture over there. And so when I was arguing for the ethics of the Inquisitions, I was doing it from a view that fundamentally um, rejects liberalism. And I and I think because Smokey affirms liberalism, he doesn't quite, he can't comprehend that I reject it and doesn't understand how to reject it. I don't think it was able to make a uh, competent response to my arguments. Can you? Well, that's, that's the thing too with the, with the, what's his name? Daniel, I can't, I can't pronounce his last name, that Muslim guy. Uh, Daniel Heikachu. Yeah. So basically the thing about him is that, you know, I don't like, I don't disagree with a lot of what he said. A lot of what he says I would agree with, you know, I mean the whole, on, especially on a lot of social, social issues. And, and, and that's where like, I, I agree with you with that, you know, that the problem is, is that Western liberalism and like Western liberal ideas ha have really crept into where, you know, where, where you'll have Christians say, well, Islam is bad because, for example, women have to wear the hijab or, or they don't allow idolatry. Well, from, from a, again, from a biblical basis, you know, with modesty and women is good. You know, I mean, if I have a wife, I might make I might make her wear a head covering. You know, what I mean, I mean, that's the whole thing, too. And and that's why if I ever was to if I because there was one time where I did uh, almost get into a debate with with uh, the Daniel guy on, on a channel called EF Dawa. And, you know, I'd be the first to tell him that I don't disagree with a lot of what he says i mean i actually do agree with him and, and and he also says too that how islam also in the west has been corrupted by western liberalism because you have a lot of so-called muslim apologists affirming a lot of things like transgenderism uh all the other stuff so it's like really you know that it's like it's like 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 i would have like again uh, like like i like, like when it compares to david wood i'd have much better time debating him because I would do it not on the basis of Western liberalism, but from a biblical basis and from, you know, uh, a basis that will actually work. Because, you know, like when you try to do it from Western, like if you say, well, Islam is bad because they don't allow, you know, two men to to do, you know, get at each other in bed. Well, I mean, that, that that's a really sad argument. You know what I mean? Or if you say, well, Islam is bad because they don't allow women to, to dress like whores and harlots in public. Well, you know, like like to me, that that's just cringy. So that's the whole thing. Yeah. You know. Uh, like I saw this one video, you know, like like, like there are these these rallies, these like what are they call March Against Sharia rallies. I saw one video where it says Islam equals death for LGBTQ. I'm like, uh, is that supposed to be a bad thing? You know, right? And and now now here's the issue. I can't say I'm for 
Islam either because like it it, it, it rejects one of the two founding principles of Christianity. Or it, like, reject, like, it, re it rejects Jesus Christ as the Son of God, so therefore uh, it's, it's uh, still right, false. right, yeah. definitely. But, but like, but here's the thing: some of the social issues, I'm not even I'm not even pro Muslim on because uh, some of the social issues, I think it actually gets wrong. Like for instance, it's treatment of women. Like like yeah. like, 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 like for instance, it, 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 like how to put it? Because when Paul is in the New Testament. What he says is that there is no uh, there is no free or slave. There's no man and woman. There's no black. There's no uh, Jew or Gentile. All have a dignity under Christ. All ha all have a shared human dignity. And from what I have seen is um, from what I have seen is that like uh, the treatment of women under Islam, I would say, kind of violates their human dignity. In, yeah, in, I agreed. In, I agreed in too. In a particular way, and 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 now I'm not going to say I'm not going to go like uh, I'm not just going to um, swallow the Western swill and say women are equal to men. I mean, uh, there are quite um, palpable distinctions. Well, there's there's scientific studies showing like like men and women are phys are physically not different. I mean, I mean physically. I mean, there's a reason why historically, like for example, during World War One, women were not allowed in combat positions in the military. They could be nurses, but they could be on the front lines because they're just, they don't have the same physical build as men, you know? Right. Ex exactly. And so like, um, and so w w where I've, uh, where I've come from and, uh, how I, how I view it is that like, uh, Islam in many social issues is wrong because it rejects the idea that there is no, that there is no Jew or Greek. I mean, like, like uh, how to say it could be, how does it be? They, it, uh, it expressly rejects the idea that all humans have an equal dignity under Christ, and so I, I could not in uh, I could not in good conscience in a good conscience even become a Muslim because it fundamentally rejects uh, what um th that that foundational tenet. Yeah, yeah. That that's the thing too is like I obviously couldn't become a Muslim because first of all, I mean, the, first of all, like, you know, the Quran it says it basically curses those. I think it's Surah nine twenty or something. Surah nine thirty, I think it is. It literally curses those anyone who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I mean, regardless of what of what sect or or what kind of Christian you are, if you believe Jesus is God, you, you could even be an atheist and believe that, and it curses you for that. So like that alone means I can't be a Muslim because you know you have to believe Jesus is God's Son to to be a Christian. You know, like like you're not a Christian if you don't believe Jesus is God's Son. So exactly, and, and so it, it's just it just boggles my mind then too, like because in today's society, like uh, I, like uh, I was probably. I don't know how old I know I remember I was like four at the time, but when the World Trade Center came down, right? Um, George Bush, uh, I think W at the time, uh, he came down and just sat and asked the question, uh, why do they hate us? Referring to Al Qaeda, it's like, um, well, they well, we, well, here's the thing they hate you because you stand you stand in opposition to everything they against because understand like as far as the islamic perspective is concerned they reject western liberalism every bit as much as they reject christianity but so if, if, if i could just if i could just intrude i actually i actually read that one of the reasons why osama bin laden attacked the new york city was because of a lot of the the, the you know immorality there like, like like i read i read one of his private writings where he was saying how new york a lot there's all kinds of like what well, there's gambling there's all there's all kinds of there's drugs and everything else and that was actually one of the reasons that was one among many reasons why he attacked new york city was because of, of the immorality there so you know in many ways western liberalism is one of the i mean one of the i mean heck even the paris attacks one, one of the motives behind that was because you know they said it's a city of immorality and that kind of stuff so like that's so the western liberalism is, is one of the motives behind the muslim attacks in many ways right and, and, and you were getting on by the way i'm sorry i'm glad you and john are getting on bro uh even though you disagree on um doctrine and stuff it's nice yeah. to see you with a good conversation Right. I, 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 here's the thing. I like. I. I'm not. Out, I'm not. I'm not out going out of my way to convert anyone to the Catholic Church, because ultimately, that ultimately that's Jesus's prerogative. I'm just here to preach his gospel. And so, like, what I want to do is just represent Catholicism in an accurate way. And so, like, what what I, what I did, Bob, with that a debate with uh, Smokey Saint on the efficacy of the Inquisitions. Obviously, I'm not holding that position because it's popular. <laughs> I'm not making any friends by holding it. I'm holding it because well, you've got a right to believe what you want to believe. Bro. Right, I would never deprive you of that. Never. Yeah, definitely. And and so um and so like the, the whole reason I've uh I've come to the conclusions I have is because you know? yeah the, the reason I've come to the conclusions I have is because that's kind of what Catholicism teaches about itself. And so I yeah. I don't want to hide that. I, I just think I just think too that you know with the whole Islam thing I just think that you know and this has always been my stance I think if you're trying to score points against Islam you know white knighting for the Hindu nationalists or white knighting for you know 
all, all this of Western liberalism stuff. I think you were trying to score points against Islam. That's just one a sad, I really kind of sad, pathetic way of doing so. I mean, I mean, like me personally, like whenever that just makes me cringe whenever I see it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's like preferring. It's like, it's like saying, you know what? I would rather get shot than stabbed. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, and plus too, I mean. The, I actually was t- was talking about. I actually I actually had a website and it was deleted for hate speech, you know. But I actually had articles on there that the Hindu scriptures are not any more any less are, are not any less violent than in the Muslim scriptures. If anything, I'd even say that the Hindu scriptures are more violent because I actually uh there I, I I'll try to see if I can find the article, but they actually had a whole like 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 big huge report on on Hindu scriptures openly calling for violence against non-Hindus. And I'm not saying like violence, but going into graphic detail of how non-Hindus should be killed by Hindus. And it's like like the Rig Vedas, for example, there was like there's like 50 verses that talk about burning atheists and talk about, you know, kill and talk about like punishing Hindus who, who convert away from Hinduism. So it's like it's like really if we're gonna be against Islam because it's violent, well you should be you should be against Hinduism as well because their scriptures are 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 just as as, as violent. And, and plus two over in India I actually had a, a page on my website called Hindu Terrorism Tracker. In the past two years, there have been over a hundred terrorist attacks by Hindus in the name of Hinduism. Just in the past two years, there's, there's more that I didn't even cover. But like in many mm-hmm. ways, Hinduism is just as, as as violent. And like and and even uh, like every single day, I'm hearing about some new, you know, on, from the website called Hindu to Watch. Every single day, I'm hearing about some new terrorist attack by Hindus. So really, you know, if they're if they're main thing is that oh islam is violence or against it well you should be against hinduism as well because they're they're just as equally violent uh and their scriptures are just as equally as as you know murderous as the muslim scriptures because I, I've, I've looked at it myself yeah and that's and that's actually a thing because what's going on in hindu right now what we're so and we're seeing this throughout the whole world we've seen this with the rise of the islamic state we've seen this with the conversion of hagia sophia into a mosque and we're seeing this now when even uh in india but we're seeing the collapse of uh, of Western power and of, of secularism yeah. across the whole world. Because, like, how would I put it? Um, the British Empire basically gained world dominance around the 18th century, okay? About, about the mid-18th century. And we, as Americans, simply uh, took off or t- t- took took where they left off uh, after their collapse in, the, like, the uh, 1920s. And so, basically, for the better part of all, almost three to four hundred years... Uh, Western power has had the privilege of imposing its understanding of the world on others that don't have it, of just assuming our way of life is the natural default. And as Western power begins to collapse, as secularism begins to collapse, we're beginning to realize that's not true because when we leave, the world returns to its natural state. Like, like uh, uh, listen, two days after we left uh, Afghanistan, the Taliban came back. Right? Yeah. It, it's just like in, 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 oh, oh, oh yeah and, and speaking of western liberalism i saw a taliban they actually posted a meme on one of their twitter pages of basically mocking westerners for saying oh your culture is homophobic and anti-semitic and this and that and they're just mocking it saying yeah it is and we don't care we, we don't care what you think exactly yeah exactly yeah. And because that's the thing because uh because here's the thing like uh if you are a christian you if you are a christian and whether you're a catholic protestant or or, or any or any denomination you well, well, what's, 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 what's considered what's considered under the banner of Christianity? We can put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no matter what's under the banner of Christianity, you are a secularist because you have to be because the understanding that there is a distinction between the ecclesiastical power and secular power goes goes all the way back to the fourth century from the writings of Saint Augustine. So, like, like you actually, John, by definition, are a secularist as much as I am, and yeah. so what's and so so what's going on is that like as Western power begins to collapse, and when, when we've invented these secular governments in Iraq and Afghanistan and e- even in Turkey, we're beginning to see its collapse as Western powers retreat and the world's returning back to its natural state before we entered, and so what what we're what is beginning to dawn on wet on the on Westerners and especially I would argue. Uh, atheist secularists is just how culturally contingent things like human rights secularism are because like th- think about it like this after the after um n- now now since china has had dominion over the whole of east asia uh, and they're big and they're and campaigning for an act of genocide against the uh, xinjiang muslims we're beginning to see that for, as far as like as far as like the uh, atheists of uh, china is concerned these things called human rights in a secular government is every bit as theological and fictional as gods, angels, and demons. 
You well, know? It's, it's funny too because you know even atheist China and atheist North Korea they look at Western liberalism and they laugh. I mean, I mean, like, like for example, if you I, if you look at a lot of like for example like North Korean propaganda and Chinese propaganda, they often will portray things like you know homosexuality or 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 things like that. They'll portray it as a characteristic of, of Western immorality. So even even atheists over over in these countries, you know, they 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 just they they laugh at all this Western you know quote unquote enlightenment and that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, I know. I completely agree with that. I know. I know where you're coming from. Now, but now, because the, the the thing about it, the thing about what's going on with uh, them, is that like, uh, um, how 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 do I put this? Because like, um, atheists, and I notice this about on atheism more than any other group. I'm, a, I'm an ex, I'm an ex atheist, by the way. I oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like um, um, yeah. So what these what they do is that like uh, they look at themselves as like uh, kind of enlightened that they have this thing called secular liberalism and they have this understanding of uh, human rights uh, equal rights for women that black people shouldn't be enslaved and they honestly think that these ideas are any less theological than mine <laughs> because yeah. like because uh, like they're go they're going all about they're going all on this proof that like uh, we need to prove God and we need to prove Christianity prove Jesus Christ died on the cross it's like okay well um Prove to me that women should be anything other than walking sex toys. Prove to me that black people, sh oh, that it is inherently immoral for black people to be enslaved. Prove to me that the ideal civilization should be secular. Because all you have to do is just ask these questions. They can't do it because they do not have the intellect to realize that their ideas are every bit as much theological as mine. It's just they want to pick and choose what they want to accept. They don't like the idea of God, the judgment of hell, angels, demons, and the sacrifice of Christ, but they're okay with human rights. They're okay with uh, feminism. They're okay with all of these things that are weeds that grew up from the Christian seedbed, and yet they're utterly ignorant to the fact that these ideas are every bit as theological, every bit as philosophical, and therefore every bit as unprovable as the risen Christ. Well, it's funny too because speaking speaking of picking and choosing, I actually I, like a while back I got into an argument with a like, and this is how it's like immature atheists are, which which you know as an ex atheist I, I know firsthand because I used to be like that myself. But I I I, was, I got into an argument with this one atheist, and then like five more of them just popped up out of nowhere, and were spamming my Twitter feed, and they ended up getting my Twitter page deleted for hate speech. But we we basically were arguing, and we we were arguing on the issue. I forget what exactly it was something about. It was, it was just something about marriage and why marriage is only between a man and a woman. I posted like 20 different, like 10 different studies, you know, proving like, like scientifically and also <laughs> like, like psychologically also that, you know, <laughs> men and women, you know, that kind of marriage is, is the more functional marriage. And they just didn't accept it. They just called me homophobic and they just, they just rejected it. So, 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 cool. they, so, you know, they care about science, but then whenever science contradicts their, their liberal worldview, they just reject it. So they, yeah, yeah. They, they, pick, they pick and choose what they want, you know? I don't think they popped up out of nowhere, John. They wait, they, they'll wait to pounce on you. Well, there was one time about four years ago, and this, this is back when I was still part of Stephen Anderson's little cult. But I actually, um, and, and I didn't even know this, but apparently the, a lot of these atheists already know who I am because apparently when I came out and said I was an ex-atheist, a lot of them, you know, uh, a lot of them got triggered over that. But basically, uh, because how, how my testimony was is that I was an atheist, then I became what I call a religious atheist when I was part of Anderson's cult because I was a false convert. So, but the, basically, what happened was is that about four years ago, uh, I I, po I responded to this atheist guy on YouTube who, or not YouTube, Twitter, who was uh, verified, and and, and he actually uh, screenshotted my tweet, posted it on his page. He had like hundred thousand followers. And, and then he said, he basically said my name and says, oh, look, it's him again. You know, so even he knew who I was. And then apparently, all, and, and of course, all of his followers just flooded my page. But the thing is that, you know, this is how they act. And, and you're right, Bob, you know, a lot of them are just waiting in the wings. I mean, when that atheist guy posted my page or posted my tweet, you know, all of his followers, they just they already knew who I was because – I guess they just watch me all the time or whatever because they just seem to like, like even the ones that are very. I mean, the freedom, the freedom from religion foundation actually reposted my tweet and like was making fun of me one time about four years ago. So, hey yeah. John, yeah, here, I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt here for one reason. I gotta get going. I got dinner on the table and I'm very yeah. hungry. Uh, yeah. so, so, so I'm going to just leave with a, with a, just a few parting thoughts. It was very nice that we agree on the uh, absolute cancer that Western liberalism has on the society. Yeah. Oh, and Bob, we blame you because this came from England, just so you know. All mean, all the big atheist intellectuals, like what's uh, Dawkins, well, Hitchens, all of them are for England. Yeah. Oh, and, well, and so the only good thing that came out of uh, the USA is peanut butter. 
Although no, I, 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 I will say this. I will say this. I will say this. Bob. Bob. <laughs> I will say this. The I, King James Bible did come out of England, so there was that. You know, there was yeah, that good thing. Yeah. So uh, here I have. Um, I um. That's actually my email in the private chat, uh, John. Sure. I, I hit, hit me up sometime. I'd like to have a chat with you. Sure. Let me, let me, just, so, let me just copy that down so I don't lose it. Yeah. And so uh, now, now my parting thoughts is like, uh, w- once, I, once I'm done with, uh, once I'm done finishing the debate with David Wood and Heikachu, I'm going to put uh, my response to you, John, uh, probably the next week. And the following week, I'm going to uh, kind of uh, go over the, all the material I didn't get to cover in the debate. And so I'm definitely going to be reading out of excerpts from the from Dr. Cayman's book, The Spanish Inquisition, as well as um, because I'm basically I'm, I'm giving you all a, a bunch of works I used in the debate for uh, further reading. So that I, I have The Spanish Inquisition, a historical revision by Dr. Henry Cayman, Integralism by uh, Dr. Thomas Crean and well, actually Dr. Alan Filmister and Father Thomas Crean. I also used a uh, history of medieval heresy and inquisition by Dr. by Dr. Jennifer Dean. And finally, Dominion by historian Tom Holland. Oh, and uh, John, I I thoroughly recommend you read Dominion. It is a fantastic read, fantastic book. All right, I'll just I'll, I'll write that down. That, that's about the Inquisition, is it? Dominion. A Dominion? No, actually, no. I you I used a segment of Dominion. I used a chapter oh, out right. from Dominion as a way of um as a way of like uh, affording my argument. But typically, uh, Dominion is actually the story about how the West is tangibly Christian, even those that are supposedly atheist are still operating off of Christian moral assumptions in virtually every way. And so, as I said, fantastic book. And I, I recommend uh, everybody here picking it up in, in, in the audience and in the uh, in the chat here. Anyway, I'm going to go get I'm going to eat my dinner. Uh, do you want to say something real quick, Bob? Uh, no, it's nice of you to come in for all. Uh, yeah, maybe we can discuss Catholicism versus Christianity, and you know what I mean. Or Next yeah, time. definitely what you would definitely what you would consider Christianity. We could definitely do that. Uh, j- just uh, let's see. Uh, let me see, let me let me see here. Um, my email's been acting up a lot lately, and people have been uh, be kind of been getting spam. I mean, a lot of people have been getting spammed on my emails. So, like, uh, I, I got I got to see if you're uh, considered spam, Bob, and uh, see if I can fix that. But uh, yeah, do hit me up on my email, and uh, and uh, I'll, I'll solve the problem. I was just gonna say this. You know, we, we may disagree on on doctrine and theology, but we can we can still have a civilized discussion like adults. You know what I mean? I mean, we don't have to like yeah. you know, that's the thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna eat my dinner. Uh, right. I love every single one of you. Bye bye. All right. I find, oh Bob, I, I finally found that article too. By the way, about the 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 Hindu thing or whatever. The Hindu, I'll, I'll post the link. Uh, it it, it is it, just keep in mind it is from a Muslim. I mean, it's from a, a Muslim website, so I obviously would would disagree with the Muslim on that on the Islam yeah. thing. But 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 he 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 basically it, the whole article. It's called "Killing Infidels in Hinduism." When he basically gives like a whole bunch of examples of the Hindu scriptures, yeah. basically telling Hindus how they're supposed to kill infidels. So. Are you, are you posting it in the comments or the private chat? I can put. I'll, it I'll post it want. in both the comments and private chat. It, it's actually okay. very. It's a very. De- it's a very detailed article. That, like it. Like it'll yeah. take you. Like like my my app tells me that that or I, I have a speech app where it reads out articles for me. It w- it would take four hours and twenty four minutes to read the whole thing. So it's it's a very oh. detailed article. All right. Okay. Or I mean, if I was to use my 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 on my uh, audio readers, because I I oh, occasionally do that. Ask them one of them. Yeah. Yeah, well, like what I'll do is that if I'm if I'm doing something and I don't feel like reading, I'll just play the audio where it just reads for me. And then, but this because my app it tells me how long it will take to read the whole thing. This one will take four hours to read it, so it, it's a big article. Oh. And again, keep in mind the website is is run by a Muslim, so obviously I would you know disagree with the Islam th- aspect. Yeah, because he's writing it, he's writing it from a kind of like a pro-Islamic uh, stance, but at the same time too, you know. You know, like a broken clock is right twice a day, and the truth is the truth regardless of who is saying it. Yeah, we shouldn't lie against the truth. How do you? What? How do you? I'm not trying to get you to. Uh, how do you feel about Fro now that you've spoken well, to him? I, I mean, you know, I mean, he definitely is. You know, I mean, I, I use that as an example of how we, you know, we may have vehement disagreements on on doctrine, and obviously, I, I still tend yeah. to keep making videos against Catholicism, but you know, yeah. it just shows that you know. You can have a civilized discussion like like grown adults with someone yeah. you disagree with. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. He's too intelligent to be Catholic, though. Really. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, if if he were to get saved, he would be a great 
apologist for Jesus Christ if he got saved. I mean, he he definitely oh, yeah. is very smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jeff says he looks like Matthew Lando. Yeah, his, his profile picture does look a little like Matthew Lando. That is true. His profile picture is uh, Maximilian Colby. Who is that, anyway? I never heard of him. He's one of the Roman Catholic so-called saints. Oh. They say so-called prayers to him and things like that, you know. Yeah. Oh, 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 I, just a little side note. Remember that article I was telling you about on the website, Stop Hate and Bigotry? Well, they got one article on me called John Craig and Condemns the Westboro Baptist Church as a Satanic Calvinist Cult. This is funny. I'm going to read this. Oh, there's oh, a God. book about Calvinism on um, Amazon. Yeah. Calvinism is essentially Gnostic. It's older than people think, John. I, I, I believe that. I mean... I mean, John Calvin too. I looked at I looked at the history of Calvinism. He got a lot of his doctrines from Augustine. So it is. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, Augustine, Augustinian Calvinism. Have a Google of it, John. Yeah, I if mean, you've got time, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. and that's that's also why Calvin. You know, he had the same kind of mentality as Augustine, which is you know, the like the Dominion theology, all other stuff. So it's like that. That's why I say you know Calvinism. You know, it, it, it is essentially a form of just repackaged Augustinianism. It, it's just the same yeah. thing, really. Yeah. Yeah, and, okay? and, and I was thinking, I was thinking about that thing about the West the Westboro Baptist Church. You know, like this, this, this it, and it's funny too. This article is called "Stop Hate and Bigotry," but then they're they're like attacking me for condemning Westboro. It's like what. I thought you're. I thought you're against hate and bigotry, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, I mean, left wingers. They're, they're they're never consistent. They just will find anything to go after you on. But but basically, um, I think the article they're trying to make me like I'm. They're trying to make it seem like I'm some kind of hypocrite for condemning Westboro because I'm supposed to be some kind of hate monger as well. But whatever. I mean, they can say what they want about me. It's funny too. This article. This 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 website. I, I just scroll through it. They have like they have like five articles on here. Two and three of them are about me, and like two of them are about like some other stuff. So. I don't think you're a hater, John. Well, I, I mean, I mean, what, what they're claiming, they, they, like in the article, they claim this is what they say: John Cragen, the founder and leader of the virulently anti-Catholic, anti-Judaic is that even a is that even a word? Uh, Islamophobic, atheophobic, homophobic, faithful servants of Christ has condemned the Westboro Baptist Church as a satanic Calvinist cult and follows the satanic heresy of Calvinism. You know, that, that's what they that's what they literally open the thing up with. And, and, and then they go on to say, uh, John Cr John Cragen has a long history of, of virulently anti-Catholic, anti-LGBTQ, anti-Hindu, and anti-Islamic rhetoric, uh, and he's promoted anti-Catholicism, anti-atheism, all this other stuff. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, they're basically trying to make it seem like I'm just like Westbro and I'm condemning them. I mean, they're 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 just desperate. <laughs> but the, they have the link is in the description. This is just funny. I, I just love it. So they got five articles, and three of the five articles are about me, and the other two are just about some other random stuff. So how are you doing on Rumble, John? Are you getting plenty of views and stuff? Yeah, getting decent views. I haven't seen any, anything from Jake lately. Who? I'm more interested in... T I haven't seen anything from Jake lately. Oh, I'm actually more interested in what's going on with Tim. Is he okay? Um, I think he's pretty good. I mean, I, I him and I t talked over Skype about like two months ago, but he, I think he's doing pretty good. I mean, you know, I, I I just think the reason why I have a lot of respect for Tim is that the way he he kind of handled the way the Denlinger people treated him, he, he was very mature about it. I mean, you know, he didn't like blow up on them. I mean, I I just think though, and and even though they're continuing to just slander him, that he's still you know just just whatever they can say what they want. Um, I'm that's sure the thing. That, so, go I'm ahead. Sure could have said a lot more than he did do. Yeah, that's that's the thing too. Is that the way they treated him? He could have done. He could could. Have, I mean, the, he 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 had every right to do many videos on Brian, but he kept that too. But like the way they treated him, he would have had every right to do more videos on Brian because the way they treated him was wicked. I mean, and the thing yeah. is too is that you know, to my shame, I saw the way they treated him, and you know, you know, that was it was it was at that point. And I've shared my testimony before, but that was at that point was when I began seeing problems. And then, of course, about a month or so later, I was kicked out as well. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like Tim a lot. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for him. I, 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 I mean, I, I, ever since that 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 thing with Brian, I did have more respect for him just by the way he handled it and how how he he you know just just ignored them and just kind of doing did his own thing. 
It's funny too because they they they're they're saying oh he's obsessed with Brian. He made like two videos yet like two years later they're still mentioning him. So it's like who's really obsessed with who? Yeah. What did I miss? I just I just came back. Oh. You, uh, you, yeah. you, you basically missed this, this discussion me and that Catholic guy had where we we basically were saying how you know one of the big problems with a lot of these anti-Islam apologists in the, in the Christian movement is that they, they argue against Islam, not from a biblical basis, but from a basis of, of Western liberalism, as in they'll say things like, well, Islam is bad because women are, are forced to dress modestly, or Islam is bad because they won't basically let two men get in bed together, or Islam is bad because of this, you know, and, and we were saying how, you know, that, uh, that, that, like, you know, there are aspects of Islam that are correct and that kind of stuff. And we were just saying how that's the problem with a lot of these, apologists who are like into the anti-islam thing is that their arguments against islam are are stuff that islam are some things that islam is correct on and you know le, le, like like for example le, like they'll go off how islam is bad because they don't allow sodomites to do their garbage well i mean that's not a bad thing it's a good thing so it was a big discussion on that basically interesting yeah and, and i i went off too about how i was saying how you know that my my biggest issue with a lot of these like they're they're called counter jihad people and like my issue with, with a lot of the Christians in that thing is that you know they're 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 so anti Islam to where they're actually side with a lot of the Hindu nationalist people against Islam and I was saying well you know as a Christian why would I do that because the Hindus are just as lost and hell bound as the Muslims so like, like from that basis but then but of course they're doing it from a Western liberal type basis not from a, a biblical basis because I because my basis is always and before my website was deleted I always said. You know that that I don't. You know the, the enemy of my enemy is not my friend. You know they're, they're both they both persecute Christians. So I, I'm I'm not siding with either. I don't care how anti-Islam the Hindu nationals are. They're still my enemy if they're persecuting Christians. That's so, right. You know, stay on the narrow road. Yeah, and, and that's the thing too is that you know is that their mindset is that, and that's why I think a lot of them are just very carnal because they're they're on such an anti-Islam thing that they're they're white knighting they're siding with Buddhists and Hindus who because they're against Islam. Well, it's like. Again, you know, they're 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 on their way to hell too, you know. And, and, and essentially, what, what they're doing is that, like, like someone else, one of my friends pointed this out to me that, like, like for example, what's his name, David Wood. He, like, you know, what he, what he basically is doing is that he's closing the door to one false religion, Islam, but then opening the door to like ten others, which is like you know, Buddhism, Hinduism, everything else. That that's the main problem, basically, because he actually has Hindus that watch his videos for for the anti-Islam stuff, you know. Hmm. So, so basically, what he's doing is he's closing the door to one false religion, but then opening it to like ten others. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry. And plus, too, it's like you know, even even from like a biblical, like a logical basis, like the Hindus are persecuting Christians too. So why would I side with them? You know, I mean, even so, like even even just on that basis alone, why am I going to side with them because they're persecuting Christians as well? Oh, John, uh, Sam Shamoon is another one. Oh yeah, he's he he he's something. He's he's something, he's, something, he's something else. Believe me. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, he, 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 he did a video. did a video on it like three or four months ago. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> I did a video on him a while back. He he basically, I don't know what he, like he basically at one point just went full on Catholic and was just defending like prayers yeah. and Mary and all this other stuff. And like yeah, he's yeah. he's something else. He he's he's a he's a piece of work. I'll just put it that way. But I I never thought of. Because I've listened to his videos, I think it, it was Shimonian or the, the something prince or other, and the way he was talking to Muslims, he was just hammering them, you know. Well, that's the thing too. I did a video recently where I showed this. Because I, I, showed this, John, John, I hadn't realized. Sorry, John. I hadn't realized that the Catholics were supporting him. He had, you know, they all think he's their brother. He's some sort of Eastern Orthodox Coptic. Well, basically Catholic, you know, I mean. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too, is that I actually have seen Christians uh, prayed around. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of him. His name is, he, he's this Buddhist monk over in, in Myanmar. Uh, let me try to find it. Uh, what's his name? Uh, let me try to find it. He, he basically, but I find like, like I find, I've actually seen some Christians, you know, professing Christians, like praise this guy and promote him. And, and again, it goes back to the thing of the, the whole narrow road thing, you know, but basically it is, it is this monk in, uh, I can't find, I'm trying to find this uh or sorry let me search him up real quick but um he's this buddhist monk over in, in Myanmar, i think it is or i think it's Myanmar. what's his name yeah. um his name is what's his name 
he uh what's his what's the guy his name i can't find i can't uh his name is um his name is there was a wikipedia article about him where was he his his name is uh ashen waratu or something like that that's the guy's name well basically he's this monk over in Myanmar who's like basically notorious for being very anti-muslim and I've, I've seen like christians promote him and again it's like the thing well again he's a buddhist monk you know i mean yeah sure he's against islam but buddhism is false too so i mean that's the thing as well and, and plus too it's like you know it's like what's happening with Myanmar is that they're basically genociding the Muslims you know so it's like I mean I mean so yeah sure they're Buddhist but if you're a Christian you preach the gospel you don't genocide anybody you know you should be supporting that either I don't care what religion they are murdering them isn't a solution at all yeah I, I don't I don't care I don't care if they're they're Muslim or, or, or whatever you know, like you don't you don't genocide again. You don't do genocide again. I don't care. I don't care. That's why I've always said too. You know, like when I see professing, professing Christians say that, oh, well, China is is correct to put Muslims in, in camps and, and persecute them. Again, you know, you know they forget. They seem to also forget the fact that a lot of these people, these these nations, persecute Christians too. But you know, I don't care what what if they're Muslim or not. You know, like mass genocide is wrong regardless of who it's against. Yeah. I don't care. I don't even care if it's against, you know, atheists or, or whatever. It's wrong. It's murder. Atheists are diabolical, though, John. Oh, oh yeah, believe, believe me. As an ex-atheist, I know firsthand. They, they are they are, are, are sick people. It says, but the atheists, do they, are they basically in their own mind, like, they think they're God of reality or something? Well, I mean, I, I mean me personally, I mean, I can't really speak for any atheist, but when I was an atheist, I, I personally... Uh, I I would say I was borderline nuts. I mean, a lot of them are just really crazy. But like, yeah, when I was it's just me personally, when I was an atheist, I was, I I kind of thought of myself as pretty good. You know, I mean, any atheist they think they're a good person, so they they kind of think they're God in that area. But I mean, I can't speak for all atheists. I just know that when I was an atheist, I was I was pretty rabid. I mean, I was I was a pretty wicked guy. My family just exploded, John. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I had an egg in it as well. I've got bacon and egg in it. On this morning, so I microwaved it and it exploded. Wow, my egg, my egg blew up. <laughs> yeah, are you, are you eating well, Bob? <coughs> yeah, well, I try and avoid well, not avoid eating. I, I've got a habit of just eating when well, when I'm hungry. If I don't feel like eating, I just won't. I mean, mm. I might have a couple of biscuits or something. Uh, you know, if only I didn't have to eat. So inconvenient. Well, we the Hindus and do uh, your breath area. No. Well, over in India, Hindus are actually literally murdering people for eating beef. So <laughs> that that that's the fruit. And, and by the way, too, I was telling Fro this, but I'll, I'll, I posted a link in the chat about this website uh, where they actually get document in the Hindu scriptures, like calls for violence against non-Hindus. So when you actually read about Hindus persecuting non-Hindus in India, they're actually following their text because I'll, I'll post the link again, but basically they, they, it's a big long article about just examples in the Hindu text of essentially the same thing as what the Quran would say about non-Muslims essentially. But, uh, but like when you really, when you really get down to it, when you get down to it, the Hindus are just as, as or Hinduism as, as a, Religion is every bit as, as violent as Islam. Oh, All right, I'm, I'm gonna get a glass of water. I'll be back. Okay. I'm just gonna type something into the chat, Jeff. Don't read it out though. Sure. I noticed Bob with uh, Fro is he's a very, he's got a lot of wisdom and worldly wisdom, but he's too wise. Yeah. And that's his uh, Achilles heel, he's too wise. He's a little bit pushy as well. Yeah. He tends to, uh, I don't know if he does it purposely, he does tend to sort of take over. 
<laughs> Just like Mama told him. Yeah. He's only a young fella. I think he's... Uh, how old is he? 24 or something. Oh, wow. He's got that uh, youthfulness to him. Yeah. Flo's got a squeaky voice. He needs a, a <laughs> never mind. So, Jeff, uh, are you still getting fellowship where you are, or have you moved, or? Locally, I do, which is nice. I know a few, yeah, a few other Christians. Online, I recently I reached out to Matthew Lando the past month a few times, but he he's refused to respond to me. He uh, ignores me. Yeah, I oh no, that's the thing. I saw one of Brian Denning's videos. I think it was to do with the Cartable KJB, because I think he got booted officially in that video. But I read some of the comments, and only people who know the history, sort of. Because Matthew said, Oh, certain lies have been told about certain people. But he wouldn't men he didn't mention who'd been lied about and by whom. Yeah. And I read, be I had to read between the lines, but because of what I sort of know about the history, not everything, I mean, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. I thought, yeah, I know who you're on about, and you haven't got the guts to just be tell the truth and come out with it and say, this guy lied about this guy, we were wrong, you know. Mm. Mm. But anyway, that's okay. So now they're flocking together. At a, it's a... Philip, Alexander, uh, Brad. Yeah, that's what I miss. With Brian, it's just uh, Matthew, JT, and Brian. All the oh, people... it's that, it, oh, it's that small now? <laughs> wow. All the people that are in Brian's side chat when he does his live stream, two or three names are recognizing that. Uh, completely new set of people. Yeah, that's the thing too. Like, I very seldomly recognize anybody in the comment section. Like, it's mostly I think because because what happens oftentimes is that whenever somebody from like the the inner circle leaves, usually like twenty or thirty people also leave with them too because they've seen what they like. So um, that's why I've just noticed quite a lot. Like when I got kicked out of Brian's cult, there were at least like ten other people that left with me. Yeah. You see that inside chat, John? Don't read it out, but... Oh, I see it, yeah. Yeah. That's one, Bob, who I was very disappointed with because he I thought he was a nice, you know, a nice brother in Christ, a very kind. And he, he is. Oh, he is. turned his back on me and hasn't said a peep either. No. Who, who are we talking about, Brian, or, or who, who was it? The guy in the chat. Oh, I see. But the private chat or the... Um... The private chat. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's the thing too, is that, you know, is that the thing about most of the people are still with Brian is that, you know, when I was with them too, I thought they were my friends as well, but, you know, it just seems that, that whenever you, you say something about, against Brian, they just stab you in the back, basically. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if I'm somebody's friend, they, 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 you know, not that they need my permission, but they, they talk to who they want. I would never, never presume to tell them, oh, don't talk to this person, don't talk to that person. And I might the, say Same thing to do with my friends, you know. My you friends know can mean? talk to whoever they want. I guess that my friends can, criti can criticize me all the time. Well, I mean, I, I've had, you know, people criticize me. I mean, my, my friends can, if my friends want to make videos criticizing me, they can go right ahead. I'm I i, I I'm open to criticism. I mean, I, I like criticism. You know, it helps me a lot of times. Hmm. I mean, if I come up with a video and I say something stupid, feel free to make a video correcting me. You know, I mean, it'll be it's, it's good for me. Well, ideally, they should email you and point it out to you and, you know. Yeah. Privately, I think. Generally, I think the problem is, too, is that, you know, is that I just think it's funny how how Brian complains, oh, well, they're making videos about me. Well, the thing is, is that he's hard to contact. I mean, 
I mean, like you're right. Yeah. You can't. You, he won't. He doesn't take phone calls. Won't let him email him. So you have to write him a letter, and he, and that doesn't get responded to for months. So you're kind of forced to have to do a video because, like, you, you like you can't contact him really. I've got two of his emails, but I don't know if they're still alive. I I had Brian's email at one point, but he's I I. I, all I know is that when JT did that video about me about a year ago, Brian was in the comments. So Brian obviously knows that you know, I basically made videos about him. So I think Brian just blocked my email because I because I, I actually emailed him at one point, uh, but then he but then he never responded after that. I put them in the private chat. Well, it's kind of funny too that one time with that JT JT guy did that video on me. So he was going off with how that was an eight hour live stream, but he forgets the fact that I didn't even join the live stream until it was like five hours in. So he may seem like I was doing this eight hour live stream on him when I didn't even join until like five hours into the stream. But those Denlingers were in a 14 hour live stream with us, John. <laughs> yeah, that was that was funny too. 14 hours. You know. Yeah. And plus, too, is like when you have multiple people on a stream, it tends to just last longer because every, you know everyone's talking, you know. Yeah. Mm. I mean, like when I, when, I, when I do a live stream, when I do a live stream by myself, it typically will last no more than thirty minutes. But when I do, when I do one with you, once with you, Bob, it can last up to two or three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just just right now, we we've been live for almost two hours. I mean, we've, we've been live for one hour and fifty six minutes. So, yeah. Are you trying to get a job, John? Are you, are you, are you going to? I'm actually in the process of moving to a new house. So, and and the area I'm moving to has lots. It's like it's like a gold mine of jobs. So, I'm I've been just Ooh, looking yeah. there for and and jobs too pay really well as well. So. Uh, yeah. Plus, I'm moving in like like in a few months, so I figured that I'll just you know because the Rumble videos do make enough, so I'll just I'll just have on that, and then once I move to Newtown, I'll, I'll get me what, get me what from one of those gold mine of because the town, again the town's like a gold mine of jobs. It's it's like I mean I mean it's like it's in fact there's so many good jobs. I'm actually having a hard time choosing. Well, are you okay for money now, though? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I'm I'm good now. I mean, the Rumble videos, you know, they they do they do give you know they they are a, a somewhat reliable source of income. Yeah. Plus two, plus two. Since I'm still living at home, technically my mom is still kind of paying the bills. Although, mm -hmm. I, although I still have to buy myself groceries and that kind of stuff. So there's that. Yeah. So if, you ever get, if you ever get desperately skinned, John, and you really need some cash, let me know. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny today actually because um. Uh, for whatever reason, I had no appetite, so I didn't, I didn't eat for like like a good chunk of the day, and I was so hungry that I just ordered the pizza because I was so hungry, and I just didn't want to. I I why well, I couldn't go to the grocery store because it was a blizzard out, so I just had to order. I had to order Domino's pizza <laughs> today. Well, I'm just curious, John. It's none of my business, but uh, where, where's your dad? Uh, he is. He's actually uh, helped my mom with the stuff, some of the stuff. Hmm. Yeah, because I'm basically like an adult. They they, they said we'll just, we'll just leave you alone for a while because uh, you know, base because they say I was just basically already independent at that point. So they just they felt comfortable to leave me for a couple months because at the time I was already working. So they just figured whatever. The problem is too is that because both my parents had to work because we just live in a area where you just have to have two incomes. That's the thing too. We we live in we live in kind of an area where. It's it's kind of expensive. Even even a small house is pretty expensive. Hence why we're trying to move. So some are cheaper. Well, Ontario is just an expensive province. Yeah, that's that's kind of the problem. Is that you know, let, like even small towns, like the one we're moving to, it's still kind of like ooh, it's a bit pricey. You know, even for a small house. So and, and it's the kind of thing where you know, because my family are saved. I mean, I I I, I know her, know for a fact my family is saved. And and the thing is too is that they tr we tried it where we would have like a single income and they just they just couldn't do it because it's just too expensive. So so my mom she works from home basically she she uh, works from, she she basically teaches classes from home. Oh. Yeah. Have you got a skill that you could turn into? One of my skills is just simply brute physical strength. That that's kind of the thing. Hence hence why they, they wanted me. That's hence why they actually liked me for the night shift because. Uh, 
because because I actually I had always grown up doing a lot of physical stuff, so I, I just kind of developed. Just I mean, when I was thirteen, like when I was thirteen years old, I was literally able to punch through the thick security glass at, at my elementary school. So, which which it's like nobody could do that, but like I because the thick security glass is meant to be like security glass, and I was able to punch through it at thirteen years old. So, I I, I just I think just growing up my whole life doing a lot of physical stuff, I just kind of developed this brute physical strength to where I I'm just good at doing a lot of physical stuff. Which is why I, I wouldn't have a problem with living off grid because, you know, I'm already used to a lot of physical labor anyway. Yeah. I mean, well, like, it, like, like if, if, like if, I, if I had to build, if I had to build my own house, I, I wouldn't have a problem doing it. Cause it's not like, I'm, I'm not like, I'm like, like not familiar with, with physical work. So. Yeah. Companies with buying land to, to live off grid. I mean, you've got to get the money for the land and then you've got to get the timber and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I mean, Brian, he, he did it at the expense. I just think it's funny how Brian, you know, because I just remember any, everything he buys is off his donation money because that's what he lives off of. So, yeah. And I, I, I just have a theory as well. This is a theory I've had for a while. I think the reason why he's so desperate to try to discredit those who criticize him is because those of us who criticize him don't, we don't rely on our, on our followers for money. I mean, all of us have jobs or have some source of income. I mean, I had a job, but like all of us have some source of income to where we don't rely on the internet for money. But I think with Brian, you know, because he relies on his followers for money, if too many of them leave and stop sending in their money, then there's a problem there. So I, I just, yeah. I, that's just my theory. I think that's the reason why he's so desperate to try to just, just, just lie about and discredit. Because like, you look at what he's saying, he blatantly is telling lies about those who criticize him. But uh, like, like with Tim's video, when his response to, to Brian you know, like Tim caught Brian lying just like multiple times. I just think the reason why he does that is because he has to discredit his followers or also or discredit his ex followers or else many of his followers will leave him and stop sending him money. That's just my theory. Yeah. And he's got to have some sort of strive to get people sort of interested. Yeah. And plus, too, he wants that he, he has to make himself like the victim so people will sympathize with him. I mean, I wouldn't mind him asking for donations and stuff. Not that it's any of my business or anybody. I mean, I've, I've never asked for donations. Is, and here's but the fun part too. When I got, when I got kicked out of Brian's cult, doing the hours for it, John, is he? Oh no, but no. I actually, I actually was saying that when I got kicked out of Brian's cult, I actually had someone accuse me of being money hungry. When it's like I never once asked for donations. Meanwhile, Brian's constantly asking for donations. That's the fun part. I, I just think it's funny. That's all. Yeah. No, as I say, I don't, I don't agree with muzzling the ox that treads out the corn. Yeah. You've only got 24 hours in a day, John. If you're using a whole morning to make a video every day or two or three hours, I see no real objection to you getting, you know, oh, somebody yeah. donated $20 or whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, hence why I monetize my Rumble videos because I was kind of forced to. <laughs> or, or else or else I'd have to continue to order pizza from Domino's and not just go to the grocery store. <laughs> Yeah, because I think Donald's pizza, Donald's pizza is not the not the healthiest option anyway. So no, you need to get some moose pie down here, John. Yeah, it was also funny too because you know because supposedly Canada is a first world country, but for a while there was actually shortages in the shortages in the grocery stores, which is like you don't expect that in a first world country. So no, that was, that was not fine. Like Canada, no. Well, I mean, just any first world country, you don't expect there to be shortages at any store, but there was at one point. Because I don't know what it was, but there was at one point just shortages. You can't just go out and hunt over there, though, John, can you? Without well, you, you have to, when you have to have a license to hunt. You have to have like a permit, the, the, a yeah. gun permit. You have to have a gun license and a hunting license, I think. Yeah, and you got to have all sorts of security. Uh, what was that? You might, be you might be better off with a crossbow, John. I think you have to have a license for that too, though. I'm not sure. Oh, I I just think for any kind of hunting, you have to have a license for. I'm not sure. If you get a house near the coast, you just go fishing, don't you? Get some. Yeah, I, I can just go fishing. I mean, there's that. Have we done any diving lately, John? Uh, maybe it's too cold at the moment. Anyway, isn't it? Well, I mean, can I mean Canada people like, like Americans think think Canada Americans basically think that Canadians like us live in igloos, igloos all, all year round. So 
we, we get pretty yeah. cold winters. It's funny because the part of Canada I'm from is actually where because we can get like ridiculously cold winters to where like you can get frostbite within a matter of like five minutes if you're out too long or if, you, if you're outside with no gloves on. But then we can get like like torturously hot summers. I mean, just just the uh, back in the summer of 2021. I mean, it was just brutal how hot, how hot it was. I mean. And, and, and because my room, my bedroom had no air conditioning, I mean, I would wake up from like sleep, and I was just, I was just covered in just. It was like I got out of a pool. Also, sweaty it was because it was so hot in my room. So, like our, our summers in my part of camping, it can be brutal. I mean, how hot it is, but then our winters can be brutally cold too. So, do you get a, a decent breeze where you are, Jeff, on the coast? On the what is it? East coast, you're on, aren't you, Jeff? Yeah, sometimes, well, I'm a little bit inland, but you can smell the salt air. Yeah. Which is nice. <clears throat> the yeah. seagulls sometimes fly close. Mm. It's actually funny because I live, I, I live, the house I'm moving to is actually close to Lake Huron uh because I, I live close to the great, the great lake region so i actually yeah. i actually read this I'm not, i mean it's not being confirmed but supposedly there's this lake monster that lives in like, like lake seat like lake serpent creature that lives in in lake huron so once i move to the new house i want to see if i can find that thing and get like a photo of it and then oh, sell and, 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 and then and then sell the photo for money you know what i mean because hey i caught proof of the supposed serpent that lives in the lake it might munch you before you even get a photo yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, I mean, me personally, I, I mean, like, like some people can call me crazy for this, but I've always, I've always like been the kind of believer in cryptids. I, I don't, I don't like. I think there's some truth to a lot of these, like, like what do they call like the the lake monsters and everything. I think there's some truth to those. I'm not like the kind of like skeptic. Yeah. They are. I, 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 I've always, I've always believed they exist. I've always believed that they, they exist. I, I've never been like, I've never been, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm always like, even, even when I was an atheist, I, I'd always believed. That like what like what like like what are they called like Loch Ness monster? I've always believed that they're real. I, I mean, even as an atheist, I was I was never a skeptic. I've always believed that they existed. I think they've got Sasquatch up in Canada, haven't they? Somewhere. Well, they actually have one creature called the. In fact, in fact, this it, is kind of funny because in the Great Lakes region, like where, which is where I'm moving to, they actually have a creature called the Windigo. What, what the Windigo basically is is that. Oh yeah. Supposedly, like like it's basically this creature supposedly that is like it's it's basically like this big huge skeletal creature that supposedly it's like it's always hungry and like and supposedly the more it eats the more hungry it gets and and supposedly it's like it it, it it's like its main target is humans basically so yeah i mean if it does exist which i think it could you know again i believe in i i believe they exist that's gonna be fun because i'm moving to its hunting grounds so that'll be fun oh, right. oh and, and I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, it, because it, it comes from like Native American mythology, which, you know, I, I happen to believe there is some truth to what they say because they, they lived out in those areas. So I think there is some truth, a bit of truth to what to it. You know what I mean? Well, they're not known for being liars, are they, those American uh, Well, I mean, I mean, in fact, I mean, because keep in mind, they lived out in the woods all their lives. So, I mean, they, they, yeah. they might, they probably know a thing or two of what's out there. Mm. You know, I mean, maybe some like details. Are you able to defend could be... yourself okay, John? What? Go on, Jeff. No, I was just going to say, though, biblically speaking, if you think back to Genesis 6 and all the weird creatures and the creation was tampered with, there's yeah. probably a lot of truth to all these weird ghouls and goblin things. I mean, if the Wendigo does exist, I just think the scary thing, I mean, obviously... You know, I'm not the kind of person who believes in like the pagan Native American legends, but if it is true that you know, hey, the more it eats, the more hungry it gets, I just feel kind of bad for it because that that'd be kind of a torturous existence to where the more you eat, the more hungry you get. That that I just yeah. you know, but the thing is, I mean, if it does exist, which I think it could, um, I will not be going out for any walks in the woods without my hunting knife ever again. Is it a decent blade? Is it, John? It's actually it's pretty decent, actually. I mean, if you know. If the wind to go ever does attack me, I, I could put up a very good fight with the thing actually with, with my with my blade. Yeah. But yeah, I, I agree with you, Jeff. You know, the Genesis six. You know, I think a lot of these cryptids could just be, you know, connected to that well, in some yeah, area. Yeah. You know, yeah. it could be connected. I mean, if, if the wind to go does exist, which I believe it does, it could have a connection to Gen Genesis six. Who knows? Because these are creatures that like are basically not supposed to exist. These are creatures that are not like supposed to be there. So maybe they do have a connection to Genesis six. You know, 
And maybe the fact is too, the reason why they're able to evade detection is because they could just be more intelligent than your average animals. So like, like it would explain why, because you know, the sons of God, daughters of men, like these creatures could just be more intelligent than other animals. Hence why they're able to evade detection so easily. I do think that those aliens are demonic, John. Oh yeah. Aliens. I believe aliens are just devils. You know, that, yeah. that's my theory. Evil spirits or some whatever. Yeah, something. I mean, like I, I've heard it said that they're just simply like meant to be as like a distraction to, you know, Jesus Christ, basically. Yeah, it's another rabbit hole. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's the, that's the thing. I mean, I, I I have a theory too. When it comes to aliens, I I have two theories. One, they're just devils, and then two, they could also, in some cases, be you know, like when you see flying saucers, they could just also, like in some cases, be just government, you know, aircraft they're testing too. That, that, those, are, those are my two explanations for aliens, is that one, they're devils, and two, they're, just, they're, 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 they're spaceships, they're just government aircraft. Yeah. Because believe me, like you have no idea what, what your government is getting behind closed doors. I mean, no. I've even heard of some. I've even, I've even heard. I've even heard of too that there are some things the U.S. government does that even the president doesn't know about, and the president, the president does not. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a nobody. Yeah, really? I mean, I watched a documentary on aliens one time, but like a couple of years back, and it was saying too that there, there is a theory that there's secret documents about certain government projects that even the president does not know about, nor does he have access to. <coughs> yeah, because he hasn't got clearance. <coughs> yeah. And plus, too, you know, the CIA, you know, I mean, JFK, he was obviously assassinated by the CIA. So obviously the CIA, I mean, the president, whatever he does, the CIA is not afraid of him. I mean, they they, they, they control him, essentially. They, 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 he, they, he, does, he does what they tell him to do. Well, he probably knows that they can get rid of him any time he wants. Well, yeah, that's what they did with JFK. They got rid of him, you know. Yeah. That's, that's the thing about the president. It, yeah, it's the highest office of government. It, that's what they publicly say, but really behind closed doors, they 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 do what they're told, and if they don't, they're taken out. Plus, too, they 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 go to meet with the Pope too. So, you know, if if they ever disobey the Pope, then they'll they'll send their their CIA goons. I mean, I heard Eric Phelps; he called it CIA Catholics in action because they'll just send their goons after them to take him out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't. How many times has Eric had his uh, channel deleted now? About. <laughs> What, like six or seven times now? I haven't seen him on YouTube. I'll have to have a look now that you mentioned it. I think he's on like his seventh channel now, I think. Yeah. Oh, that was the last time I checked. I mean, it could, uh, it could be more too. But again, it goes back to Voltaire's quote, you know, whoever you can't, like whoever you can't criticize, that's who you're, who's in power, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've had videos deleted too for talking about Jesuits. I, I did one video, you know, you know, like Capitol siege on January sixth, where they invaded the Capitol. I did a video talking about that being a Jesuit possible Jesuit conspiracy. I wasn't even saying that. Fact, I was just saying I just happened to believe it could be a Jesuit thing, and and that got deleted for spreading it for spreading misinformation. Uh, yeah. And then I did one other video too, where I was comparing it to where I was saying how, where I was just simply saying how I think it's funny how the left wing media, how be it like Black Lives Matter, they can riot and destroy cities all summer long, and like like you barely hear any condemnation from the media or any kind of negative reporting on that. But then when this happens, it's like all oh, they go crazy over that. It's like, you know, I, I I did a video talking about I was saying how it's hypocritical how how they just seem to just gloss over the BLM riots, but then this one thing happens at the Capitol and they make a big deal out of that, and that got deleted yeah. for hate speech. So. Yeah. And of course, I I've, I had, I've had videos talking about the uh, the fluids being injected into your bloodstream that have been deleted for spreading medical misinformation as well. So mm. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't even I didn't even know you could even get a strike for spreading medical misinformation. I didn't even know that was even a thing, but apparently it is. It's funny, yeah. John. I talking to one of my coworkers, he's he got us says two or three shots. And he said he went to the hospital because he's having chest pains there a couple months ago. But he doesn't realize it's connected to what he got injected in him. Oh, get a little of this. So my my uncle on my mom's side of the family, or so my, my uncle on mom's side, which would be her brother, he actually got he actually got COVID at one point despite being triple vaccinated. So or or sorry, triple triple injected. I'll I'll say it the well, all of it is just the seasonal flu in your body detoxing itself. Yeah. And plus too, you know, the whole COVID thing, you know whatever their reasoning with these lockdowns are, you're not going to get rid. I mean, you're not going to get rid of it. You can't get rid of a virus. It's always, I mean, there's, there's still cases of the, of the black plague today. You know, you're never going to get rid of it. You know, 
And plus, too, I even heard I read an article one time too about how, you know, at this point, many humans have just their immune their immune systems have just developed immunity to it, like they would with the flu. So at this point, any kind of lockdowns or that kind of stuff are just pointless because if you do get it, you've likely already developed immunity to it at this point. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that will get taken down for medical misinformation too. You know, because YouTube doesn't like that. I just marvel at all the people that have complied and yet they're sick. <laughs> yeah, I just love. I love that. I, I I love. I actually read one article. In fact, here in Canada, I I actually did a video on this on Rumble. I posted this on Rumble. Canada has the highest rates of vaccination, yet our cases our cases are only increasing. And, and before and before my website was taken down, I posted an article about how the state of Maine had had the most heaviest vaccination or heaviest jabs out of any state, uh, and then and yet they had the highest increase of COVID nineteen cases after the fact. So, I just, I just love how people still comply after all that. Well, it seems to me it just it wipes out your natural immune system and you just get sick. Yeah. Well, essentially, what it is is that you're you're essentially. I've heard someone say that you're actually injecting like the virus into your body. With those things, yeah, I think yeah. And plus, too, I read an article too about how there was one there. And, and get a load of this: there was this one lady who was literally 117 years old. She was born in 1904. She got COVID. She got COVID and survived. And she's she's back to life as normal now. She's just back living as normal as if nothing happened. I mean, just, just think about that. 117 years old. I mean, she, like she should not even be alive. She's 117, born 1904. She gets COVID and is out within a few days and just back to normal as if nothing happened. Mm. I wonder what the next episode is with the Brian Denlinger crew. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. I wonder who else. I mean, there's not much who else they can really kick out. I mean, all they have is JT and and. Uh, Matthew Lando. I mean, JT has always just been a, re a respecter of persons towards Brian. So, I mean, if 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 something ever happens with him and Brian, I don't know. It, it will be interesting. I mean, I'm not like I'm not the kind of person who just likes seeing that, but it will be interesting to say the least if it ever does go down. Yeah, well, there's there's money involved, John. Well, plus two, I think he needs he needs Brian to promote his stuff too because his, his website would not have gone anywhere if Brian hadn't promoted it. Because my website, I I was doing my website for like years prior to him, it, it never got more than just a hundred viewers per month because like nobody promoted it. But his website, it got really popular. Plus, all of his followers are just Brian's followers, pretty much. You know. Yeah. And plus two, I want to say this about JT. You know, obviously, you know. Uh, oh, oh no, no, sorry, my cat was eating my pizza. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. well, uh, he, he just, I don't know what his deal is, but he wants me, he, he wants me to play with him or something, but I'll have to give him the attention. But basically the thing about, think about JT is that, you know, a lot of what he does is just simply copying Brian. I've noticed like a lot of what he preaches is just simply copies of, of stuff. Brian has, has said, you know, I, I, mean, think I, that, I would you agree with me, John? Cause I've never read any of Ruckman's books. But they're basically Ruckmanites. Well, that's even, I would agree. I actually would agree with that. I actually have. I actually his his what's it called, Lord of Glory book. I actually have written down several places in that book where he pretty much copies word for word stuff that Ruckman wrote. I mean, like at one part he copies, uh, he, like he literally copies word for word verbatim what Ruckman wrote in his reference notes on John chapter one verse eighteen. I know because I actually have, um, I actually have Ruckman's reference Bible. Yeah. And uh, he actually, like, in the, in his notes on John chapter 1, verse 18, JT, at one part of his Godhead book, actually copies, like, literally word for word, exactly the same as Ruckman. Yeah. I was going to do a plagiarism check on his whole book because I've got the PDF. I did one as well. I have, I have a couple. Of, I, I never came up with a video on it, but I have a couple of notes where he just copies pretty much word for word stuff that Ruckman wrote. Yeah. But if I'd have done a plagiarism check, I could have, I would have found out exactly where he's copied everything from Ruckman. Well, there's actually one part of the book where he actually copies uh, a part of uh, from a page of Ruckman's book on how, like, I think it's it's one part of his Godhead book. He like like literally like a, like half the page is like a carbon copy of a page from Ruckman's How to Teach Dispensational Truth book. I actually have the references written down somewhere. Yeah, that's a good book, by the way. What the, the dispensational? Yeah, it, the dispensation is pretty good, actually. I I, I actually highly recommend that book. Between them and Ruckman, Ruckman was smart and was a gentleman, and these guys aren't. 
Yeah, that's the thing about Ruckman is that these guys are nothing like Ruckman. Ruckman actually was like Ruckman's the kind of guy where I, I have I you know I never knew about him before Brian talked about him, but like you know based on what I read about him, you know he, he was a very humble guy. He 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 you know I mean I would I may disagree with him on some stuff, but you know Ruckman like these guys are nothing like Ruckman. These guys are prideful. They're arrogant. Uh, but Ruckman, he was humble. You know, he he you know made some mistakes. But Ruckman, Ruckman was was an was a all around pleasant guy. You know, these guys these guys are nothing like Ruckman. Yeah, and he didn't hide away in the woods or anything. Yeah, Ruck, Ruckman <laughs> actually actually act, like Ruckman actually saw people in real life. I mean, and, and it goes back to the thing of how how Brian likes to compare himself to Paul. Yet Paul actually visited the church that he was writing to. He wasn't just hiding out in a log cabin somewhere, just isolating himself. He actually would visit the church as he was writing to, you know? Well, if he was going to go and visit Brian from the furthest point in the USA from him, which would be like Texas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, it would be a four to five day journey to get up there. And then you'd be very lucky, I think, to find any accommodation. You'd have to sleep in your car. Yeah. Because there's no guarantee that Brian's going to let you through the front, <laughs> the front door and make a cup of tea for you and, well, I, I I remember watching Jeremy's video where he did with you know I I've actually spoken to Jeremy Carter I I, I actually text him him and I have have our phone numbers he you know he, he I think he's since left the whole Max Bauer group but I remember back when he was still part of the Max Bauer group he um he was saying how you know he always found it weird how Brian would never allow visitors and he was saying how back when he was part of Brian's group he actually one time asked Brian if he could visit him and this is after they they had already become close they had become good friends he asked Brian if he could visit him and Brian just told him no so like even people who are close to him he doesn't let him visit him yeah why yeah it's weird I mean I mean it's just weird I mean if you're, if you're a minister you know if you want to be like Paul then you know you should actually visit people you shouldn't just like hide out isolate yourself and just not and not just not just visit people but also make yourself easier to contact you know like like don't make some right letter and then wait months for a reply you know yeah well, i'm sure about, is, you can ahead. find lodging at the pine cone in <laughs> yeah well, well, it's it's really Oh, and then too, how how you know there's like there's one clip I saw where he goes on like a, a four like a ten minute rant about how he, his his like stove broke down, he had to buy a new one, and everything else. I'm like, yeah, people go through that stuff on a daily basis, like stuff that people go through on a daily basis. He acts like, oh, it's so hard, I have to go through this. It's like, seriously, you know? Yeah, you got to divorce your wife if you want to go on go and live out in some slavery. <laughs> yes, I saw that one. That, that was Man, crazy. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't outright say it, but he, he strongly implies that if you want to if you want to live off grid, you should just divorce your wife if she doesn't want to do it. It's like, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's so ungodly as well to say that. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It is very ungodly. I mean, because like it, it's like, and, and then and then he like he like goes to First Corinthians seven and tries to make that. Like as proof as a proof text, it's like like how do you how do you use that as a proof text to say you want to live off grid? I mean, like what? I noticed lately, John and Bob, like listening to Brian and Brad and Alexander and the other Philip, it's sort of like they they take the joy away from reading God's word. Yeah, I agree with you too. I mean, especially when Brad came up with the whole. You know, skin suit thing and, and saying that Jesus Christ flesh was sinful. I mean, that was <laughs> that was something else. But um, I agree with you. They definitely take the whole joy away from that. And plus, too, like you look, listen to their videos, and, and this is what Aaron Deering pointed out in his 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 kind of video explaining the whole situation is that you know when you listen to the videos, like you, you kind of see a lot of bitterness in there. You see a lot of kind of anger mm -hmm. and bitterness. And this is something that you know I I was kind of doing a lot when I was part of Brian's group is that I actually would make some of my own videos and I was actually often very bitter and angry myself. And, and and you look at some of the people who follow these people, you know, I've gotten some very, very nasty comments from these guys. One of the comments actually was outright wishing death on me because I spoke against Brian. Oh, yeah. And, and right. it's like, it's like, this is the kind of fruit that comes from the ministries is that people who are just very bitter and angry who listen to them. Ooh, and then Aaron even pointed out one of his videos that, that he was talking to somebody else who had left Brian's group. And he was saying that he also was becoming very bitter and angry when listening to their videos. And it wasn't until pretty much all of us broke away from Brian's group that we began kind of getting that bitterness away. So like, this is the kind of fruit that comes from their ministry is you just become very bitter and angry. Yeah. yeah. Any videos on my channel, if you want me to delete them, John, just let me know. 
Oh no, you can keep all of them up. I actually I enjoy them actually. They're pretty fun. Talking about some of the things I said, you know. Oh no, don't worry. No, 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 no. Keep it up. I actually want. I want you to keep it up. It's pretty funny. Actually, I actually like it. Right. Okay, John. Um. I I actually have that video saved on my phone. So like, if if you know, I actually I actually really enjoy. It. I sh I show my I show my I, my my mom knows who you are as well, and she she thinks you're she she actually she actually thinks you're a pretty good person actually. Yeah, Ben from the UK doesn't think so. <laughs> yeah, well, you keep something else. Yeah. Well, I'm not perfect, John, but I do try and be. I tried to. I was being okay with him, and then you just get. Um, I mean, I talk to who I want, John, just like you do, just same as Jeff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he had a, he had a good conversation with that Catholic guy. You don't agree with his doctrine and dogmas and stuff. Yeah, but, but, but we, we we were able to have civilized conversations as grown grown adults, basically. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, we are men, aren't we? I mean, yeah. I mean, we're all we're all grown adults. We can have we can have conversations as adults. We don't have to, you know, go off yeah. like children. You know. Well, you're more adult than the average twenty year old, John. Yeah. Well, most 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 guys from my generation are a joke. I mean, I I mean, like like I I I tend to rip on my generation more than. People from my from my older generations do. I mean, I mean, I mean, like you know how everyone makes. Like I'm generation, I'm Gen Z. That that's where I'm from. Uh, and and like like me personally, I rip on my generation more than anyone else does. More more than anyone else from older generations do. For one yeah. thing. Oh, I see them, John, in the break room all the time, and they're all on their cell phones watching that uh, TikTok thing. Yeah, that that thing. I mean, I, I remember I remember when I was um when I had my um when I was still on my night shift job I was actually young I was the youngest guy there I was the, I was the only guy because I was doing it when I was 19 so I was the only like teen teenager there because I was 19 well pretty much like, like like all the older guys were like like the oldest guy there was like in his 40s or whatever and, and he was saying too how like you know like he never understands that this whole TikTok thing and everything else and like it's like you look at all a lot of what my generation is in it's like how do you how do you find any kind of interest in all that stuff it's weird well, because it's like the stuff that my generation is into is weird. So go ahead. No, I just said that. I said it's like they're half retarded. Yeah, I mean, I I have I have a TikTok account, but I I never use it. I only had it just because I wanted to see what it was like. But it's like I I've had I made like one post on there, and that was like over a year ago. I I, I honestly don't understand the point of that thing. I just I just think it's stupid to be I, I just think it's kinda of dumb to be honest. I don't understand the point of it. Which is kind of funny because because like 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 for one thing, because my generation, like when in terms of like religious beliefs, you know, my generation is kind of like more secular. So I've actually had like a lot of my friends it, it, because even when I was in high school, I was I was kind of like like when I was, when I was part of Anderson's cult, I was as what you would call religious. And even like after high school, I was pretty religious. And I, I had all my friends say that, oh, you're way too religious for your age, because most kids from my generation are just a bunch of, of secularists, pretty much. So, like like it's, like very seldom you'll find just anyone from my generation of, of my age who is like like you could say like as quote unquote religious as as some as people have said I am basically. I mean, I, I don't, I don't call myself religious. I mean, you know, but like, I, I guess, but they, but that's, what, that's just my, what my friends would call me. Yeah, they'll never accuse you of the truth, John. Yeah. I, and one thing too is that you know is that when it comes to calling yourself a Christian, I just think that when a cannibal KGB makes this big deal about how you can't call yourself a Christian. I mean, I just, I just think it's a bit unnecessary. I mean, that's the whole thing. Well, it's totally unbiblical. We were first called Christians in Antioch. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand his point of trying to be separate from the world, but at the same time, yeah. too, like you don't see that. I mean, obviously, like like his point. I think one of his points is that well, they didn't they didn't, they weren't calling themselves that. They were given that title by the Romans. But at the same time, too, you don't see them. You don't see like that title being used in a bad way, as as in like oh, you know. I mean, I mean, like there are examples where you know. I mean, the word appears like three, like three different times, and not, and none of it is ever like in a negative context. I mean, it just they're just called that, you know what I mean? I mean, it's not like a bad thing. It's never, it's never seen as a bad thing where it's mentioned. Yeah, but the word Christian only means uh, in Christ. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I personally, me personally, I mean, I personally prefer the term t 
Church of the Living God. But if you want to call yourself a Christian, I have no problem with that. I mean, it's the same thing, basically. I don't really care. He seems to have left me alone. I haven't noticed him doing any videos calling me a Jesuit. So, I mean, I've got nothing against Brad. I believe he is a saved man. I just think some of the things he said, extremely unfortunate. See, when he lied about a brother in Christ, it's a problem because then you've, got, if he, if he repents of it, acknowledges the truth, he's got to admit to lying. I don't really want to, so I wouldn't want to force anybody to do anything, but I wouldn't want to force him into that position, really. I just think the problem is, too, is that this thing this thing of, of calling everybody a Jesuit who, who basically doesn't believe like you, the problem with that is that when he called, when it, for example, when he did that 10 minute rant about me calling me a Jesuit, well, the burden of proof is on him. I mean, if he can't, if he doesn't show proof that I'm a Jesuit, then it's all just hearsay. I mean, like, because the burden of proof is on him at that point. Well, yeah, it's slander, which is a sin. Yeah, I mean, if he if he can't prove that I'm a Jesuit, then at that point it's just slander, you know. If he can, if it's just him saying things but not actually proving that that I'm somehow working for the Catholic Church, then it's like then at that point it's just slander. You're right. That's all that it is. And the thing is, once it's been established that you're a liar, especially about a Christian brother, there's the credibility problem, isn't it, John? Who's going to yeah. take him seriously then? That's the thing too, is that you know, like 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 seeing how like, like when I've seen like since leaving Brian's call, I've seen how much Brian lies about people. It's come to the point where I can't trust anything Brian says. I mean, I mean, whenever Brian explains "quote unquote" his side of the story, I have no reason to trust anything he says because I've seen how much he just lies about people. You know, I I can't trust. I have no reason to trust anything he says. Please, uh, John and Bob, the latest that was. To me, one of the all-time lowest moments when he started attacking his father of all things, he's dead in the ground. Yeah, he said, "How low can you go?" Yeah, and also, and also the fact of how the reasons he's attacking him too is that bringing up stuff that like happened first of all before he was born, and then all this other stuff too is like which really should have been kept private. I mean, it was pretty, you know, it was it was pretty low. I mean, I, I would agree with that. It was definitely very, it was it was definitely not godly to say the least. One unified, continuous system. And plus, too, I think the sad thing about Brian is that, you know, you know, I, I, I was saying this to some of my friends over Instagram, is that, you know, he's he's displaying the exact same mentality he used to condemn the IFB for, which is the whole thing of don't question me, I'm the man of God, don't speak against me, I'm the man of God. He used to always condemn the, the new IFB for that. Now he's basically doing, he's been for the past couple of years, he's been doing the exact same thing. You know, people will come out and question him. He just says, well, don't question me. I'm an elder. I'm older than you. You're like, he'll just be like that. What nailed it for me, John, was when he said that those families who have had their children abused uh, deserve it. Yeah, that, that was really wicked yeah. when he said that. That, that was pretty wicked. Yeah, like, like when, when he came out and said, oh, you, you deserve to have your children abused. Yeah, that, yeah, that was wicked. I mean, th there's no other way to put it. You need a new pair of lips after that, really. And the thing is, too, is that and, and then someone tried, and then someone in the comments actually, somebody in the comments actually actually rebuked him over that. And then Brian, of course, just got you know didn't didn't take it. And then he was a guy lying about him. It's like, well, it, yeah. you just said it's all it's all in the video. You know what I mean? Yeah, I saw those comments actually. I think a screencast them or something. I screen. I I I think I took screenshots of that thing as well. I I, I forget where I sa I saved them somewhere, but. You know, yeah. it just shows how, you know, Brian just, just does not. And this is what Aaron Deering pointed out, too, how, you know, how Brian and his followers, they, they love to just point out, they point the finger at everybody else, they love to point at everybody else's wickedness. But whenever it comes to Brian's own wickedness and you point that out, they don't like that, you know. I mean, I mean, Brian loves to point out your wickedness, but then when you point out his wickedness, he just gets, he gets mad at you. Yeah. Which is why, too, like back when, I, when I, like, like, like I, like one time, like that Christmas video I did on Brian, you know, whenever his followers would comment, I would just, I would use their argument right back at them. I'd say to them, oh, you, you just don't like having your sin kicked. Because they all like to say that about everybody else. You know, like when Tim left, they say, oh, he didn't like having his sin kicked. Well, I just use their argument right back at them. Hey, you don't like me kicking Christmas because you don't like having your sin kicked. And of course, they didn't like that. No, they wouldn't, John. Yeah. And the same thing too is that is that they don't like having Brian's thing kicked either. You know, 
I mean, I mean, Brian loves to point out everybody else's wickedness, but whenever it comes to his, you know, whenever it comes to himself, he, you know, and someone points out his wickedness, then they're just lost, basically. Yeah. I've got to say though, John, I do like Phil Newton for some reason. I've seen a couple of his videos with his little pooch in his garden. He seems like a really sort of nice fella, doesn't he? Yeah, but you know, there there's still some problems with him too. I mean, you know, I mean. I mean, obviously, like I feel bad for the way you're treated by Brian, especially when the yeah. fact that you know he came out just lovingly trying to correct Brian, but then, but he still got plenty of his own issues too. I'd, I'd be honest. Yeah, Philip's problem is he it was almost work based. Like he'll judge you your salvation on your works. Yeah, that's the thing too. That's that's one of my issues with him as well. Is like he 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 very he 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 all he always looks to what your works basically, which is you know not not right. Like for example, I, I have a screenshot where he's actually calling Tim Lost in the comment section because Tim. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, and just in the comment section of his video on Brian, uh, he actually was calling Tim Lost, saying, "Oh, he like he literally said verbatim that Tim and Jake chose the world over Christ and that kind of stuff." So I, and I have screenshots of the comments proving that. So, um, so so he he still was very like a works based person where he judges he judged Tim and, and Jake saying that they only chose the world because supposedly they were into their video games. Well, it's like, you know. That, so there's other problems there. Video games after what streaming. Was what was that? I said, yet yeah, he was playing video games after he'd be streaming with me and Matt M and Matthew Lando. Yeah, yeah that's the thing too is that he was struggling with video games for a while too. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you know, calling you know Tim lost because you know, and the thing the thing about video games too, I need to point this out as well. Me personally, I have no problem with video games with with the the, the condition that they're they're obviously clean, family friendly, and in moderation. I mean, game games like like Grand Theft Auto, that kind of stuff, those are just beyond like like beyond wicked. So like like that. But if you want to play like I don't know like like, like what, what are those like you know Pac Man or, or or Mario Kart, you know, it, maybe one or two hours before bed, I have no problem with that. I mean, you have nothing else to do. But like you know, excessive you know addiction, that's a problem. I mean, that's 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 that's, that's always been my stance on the whole thing. Is that you know, clean in moderation, like maybe, maybe one hour before bed or whatever, and that's it. You know. And the thing is too is that is that you know this thing of of calling people lost over struggles with sin. It's like it's like one thing that Brian doesn't understand is that he's been saved for over twenty years, so he's had twenty years of sanctification. Meanwhile, someone who's been saved for maybe two years has not had that much sanctification. So like he has. He has to have he, he he's not having grace for those who are on a different level of sanctification. Oh, charity! Yeah, I like what uh, King's Table said. He said, uh, "Brian gets upset or angry at all the little monsters he's created." Exactly. Yeah, he he create he creates these yeah. these things, and then you know they, they you know. It, it, it's like it's like with Frankenstein's monster, where Frankenstein creates the the creature, and then it basically like he gets upset. Well, it's like, well, you you created this, you created this thing. Well, and, and then Brian starts a situation where he'll start something, and then he cries victim when people respond. Well, it's like, well, you know, I mean, I, I agree with Jeremy Carter when he said that you know nobody's stabbing Brian in the back. He's he's doing this to himself. I mean. Because people are trying to correct him and he just won't take it. So he, like, like no one's, no one's, like he did that whole video about betrayal and slander. It was like no one's betraying him or slandering him. He, he's, if anything, he's the one betraying the people that he claims are betraying him. And even Philip Newton pointed out, you know, which I would agree with him on, is that you know, for for like, that that Brian's pride is just getting out of control and how you know, and how how he's just he's just. He just won't take any kind of correction on anything. I like Philip as well, but I I wouldn't want a fellowship with him anymore yeah me neither i mean i mean the fact that he's still called tim lost i, I just had a problem i just had a problem with that because he obviously does not even know the whole situation he just believed what brian said so I, christ, that's ridiculous what was that said tim's a brother in christ that's just ridiculous calling him lost 
Yeah, yeah. What, 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 the comment that I took a screenshot of, he basically was saying that he chose the world over Christ. Well, like, again, he clearly did not even know the whole situation. He just still believed in what Brian said about the whole thing. So he's still, so yeah, so I mean, at that point, you still got problems, best way. Yeah. And again, considering the fact that Philip Newton was playing video games at the time as well. So he's kind of a hit. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's, he's he's kind of a hypocrite in that area. And plus, too, it's like you know, you know, he he claims that that he claims that he wasn't emulating Brian. Well, you know, like like it, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's it's kind of hard to like it's kind of hard to not think that because you know, I, like I, I watched his video. Well, it's like he wore the same hat, had the same beard, you know, had all the same banners and books in the background. You know, from an outside observer, it, it appears like he's emulating Brian. I mean, he, that may not have been in his same face. lumberjack I mean, shirt, John. Yeah, same Don't lumberjack shirt, same same beard, same glasses, same same, same 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 style, same video style outdoors in the woods. I mean, again, from like an outside observer, it looks like he's just emulating Brian. You know. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, was, it was kind of funny. I actually made a little meme one time where I actually had a picture of Philip and a picture of Brian side by side. I showed it to my mom, and she says, "Are those are those the same people?" And I said, "No, one Philip and one Brian." And she's like, "Wow, they look so similar." Yeah, yeah. Like, like my mom, my mom literally thought they're the same people because they just look so similar. You know. Yeah. I, I mean, I me think, personally, yeah. me personally, I just find it hard to believe that he wasn't trying to emulate Brian. I mean, like, like I just find that really hard to believe. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I do think I do remember Brian mentioning something about that people emulating, and yeah. I think he may have been alluding to that. Well, it was kind of funny because Tim pointed out how it's hypocritical. Of Brian got upset about people copying him. Meanwhile, he never rebuked Philip Newton over that, which he, like, of course, he did eventually do that, like year, like months or so later. But like, but you know, I, I just think it's funny too how Brian's followers. Well, actually, well, they'll, they'll follow Brian to the point where they start looking like him. I mean, like, like they'll start buying the same red lumberjack shirt. They'll start growing beards and everything else. I mean, like, it is funny how those they'll follow him to the point where they start looking like him. What's the point of them three swords, John? I mean, how much do them things cost? Well, I don't understand the point of buying a lumberjack. I don't understand the point of buying a red lumberjack shirt is when you weren't even a lumberjack. I mean, JT was not a lumberjack from what I understand. So why, why does he need, why does he need a lumberjack? Why does he need, why does he need that red lumberjack shirt? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, three swords. Oh, yeah. Why does he need three? Why does he need three swords? And then Philip Newton bought a sword too. I think I saw. Yeah, he did. Yeah. You're kidding. <laughs> yeah, he, he bought he, he bought a sword too. Yeah, that would have cost him a few quid. That John, believe me. But 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 then we're supposed to believe he's not trying to emulate Brian. I just find it hard to believe, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> struggling. <laughs> yeah, I'm struggling. Oop, beg your pardon. <laughs> Look, he actually bought the sword. Uh, I, I thought he just actually goes out and buys the sword. And and of course it's after Brian does it too. So like, what do you expect? I I don't understand why they need swords for it. I just find it funny. <laughs> it's obviously um, symbolic or emblematic of masculinity or of some sort, some sort of warrior Christian type thing. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I, I googled like swords on Amazon. They're like five hundred, six hundred dollars. I mean, yeah. And and, and then if that, if Brian did buy that, that would have been five hundred dollars of his followers' donation money buying the sword. He can't defend himself with those things. Yeah, I mean, mm. plus they're really heavy too. I mean, I actually held a sword. They're pretty heavy. I mean, like 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 like, it's hard to swing them around without practice. And plus, too, like you can't just walk down the street without, like, like with a sword, and not nah, people just look at you like, "What are you, what are you doing?" You know. Well, the police <laughs> would make short work of you, of the army, wouldn't they? Yeah, they, I mean, they, they probably would. They, like, you, they, you probably would have the police called on you if you, if you just walk around with a sword. Yeah, and they'd make you look like a, a vegetable <laughs> strainer, wouldn't they? With bullets. Yeah. 
I, I just think it's so funny too how after Brian has the sword, Philip buys the sword too and puts it on this back shelf with, with the same Rockman banner as well. You know. Yeah. I've never read any Rockman books. I was tempted to buy one of his um, high reference Bible, but I thought, yeah, why? I mean, I, I'm just totally again. I mean, no offense, John. Me personally, I would never buy. A King James Bible with somebody's name on it, other than KJB AB sixteen eleven King James Bible. If it's got something, somebody's someone else's name on, like Rockman or you know, no. Honestly, Bob, you should get Ruckman's book on uh, dispensationalism. Yeah, I was going to get Clarence Larkin's book on that. Uh, but I thought... There's only three verses in Scripture that mention dispensation, and the clue is in the Word itself. Unto me is given a dispensation of the Gospel. Well, you know, if you think about that word, dispense... Unto me is given the spreading abroad of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yeah, there are distinct. Um... Hey, I'm going to have to head out now. My internet's, my internet's giving out. I'm going to have to head out now. See, see you later. Oh, are you are you going to come back in, John? No. Uh, if, if I can get the internet fixed, I'll, I'll try to see if I can come back in because my internet is just. I just got a notification saying my internet is just not working. So I think it, it, it probably could be the weather. I'm not sure. Okay, John. Okay, so, so yeah. And, Great and, to talk to you again. If if you want to, are, can you live? Are you able to live stream tomorrow, or what? Or, or what are you doing tomorrow? Oh yeah, John. Anytime you want to live stream. Yeah. Even if it's uh, like two o'clock in the morning and I'm awake. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, pretty much. I have nothing else to do because the weather. I can't go anywhere with the weather. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to walk to the to the store in, in a in a blizzard. I mean, I I actually yeah. would like to keep my fingers and not get frostbite. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. I actually I prefer to not lose my fingers. Yeah. So you know, see you later. See you, right, John. Or, or see you tomorrow if 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 that happens. Yeah, we'll do, John. No All problem. Right, bye. God bless you.